all right hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you I hope you guys you invite your friends and share the link with your friends in Facebook Twitter and you can uh, feel free to do that during the broadcast anytime you wish because that will help us to get more audience and maybe more Muslims to come and join us in the conversation uh, today is going I'm going to speak about a website which is speaking about 30 facts in Islam and you know I encourage Muslim to call me anytime they wish as I said and maybe they can prove us uh, or they can prove to us any of those facts is mentioned in their website I always you know find it kind of very weird and very funny how Muslims speak about facts when Islam is not a religion of any facts except Islam as an example a religion who consider women as a second third hand citizen uh, a sexual object uh, based on uh, Islam is a religion based on fantasy and sexual fantasy uh, nothing fiction fact about it everything is fiction and the promise of heaven is fiction uh, is about uh, a God who want to satisfy your sexual needs and this God who is busy trying to make you uh, uh, having uh, the amazing sexual desire you are dreaming of but you cannot find it in your day uh, in your uh, present life so he promised you something you will have in a future and that the future supposedly is heaven so I find it very weird and very strange when a Muslim speak about uh, you know about heaven and about uh, uh, facts uh, about uh, you know many things we will see in this website how much truth we can find in those Islamic website this is the question so please if you are a Muslim and you like to call me my Skype is on and I will take only calls from Muslims no Christians please only Muslims can call us for now at least so if you are a Muslim and you think you can make it now I know that many of you thought I'm not going to do broadcast today because I was doing proofreading actually I just finished but I don't mind to make uh, a broadcast for some time so 30 facts about Islam how truthful this statement is let us see together this is the Muslim website <clears throat> number one Islam means surrender or submission to Islam which mean peace this is absolutely false because you see right away you can get the Muslims uh, uh, angry for from saying the truth to them how is that mean peace and your prophet he said I've been victorious by terror how Islam mean peace and Muhammad said Allah gave me my worth by the shadow of my arrow I mean where is the peace when a prophet himself he says I never been victorious except by terror by the way of terror so this is the first lie the Muslim they tried to keep saying to us that Islam being peace Islam is a word in Arabic is the opposite from Salam Salam mean peace Islam is not Salam Islam is the opposite which mean surrender and actually they themselves they mentioned the word surrender surrender and you will not be killed so how look how they make it totally the opposite from a person saying to you surrender or I kill you suddenly it means peace it is totally the opposite and we can show you the proof and the reference from the Quran we will wait a little bit maybe a Muslim he will call us and he will challenge us to show the proofs and the reference from the Quran nothing will speak speak about is from our own so this is number one lie number two Muslim means anyone or anything that surrender itself to the true will of God okay what is the will of God you surrender yourself willingly or against your will Islam believe that you have to surrender otherwise we will kill you you know the Muslims when they try to present to us their cult they will not tell us the whole story why they don't quote for us what their religion teach and if they quote they quote things have nothing to do with the topic here this is the peaceful Islam and this is how you surrender and this is their book and this is their scholars and this is their prophet and this is their companions and this is their belief and this is their print and this is their publishing and I have nothing to do with it 
you are the best of people ever raised for the benefit of mankind the word benefit by the way is between two bracket it's not even in the Quran this is the verse from the Quran chapter 3 verse 110 how do Muslims understand this verse? Those who speak about Islam is, is mean uh, uh, peace, uh, surrender in the meaning of peace. Islam means people who they are peaceful. Uh, uh, Islam means you you surrender to Allah, you surrender to Allah. You know, you surrender to Allah, that's, uh, are you surrendering willingly or you are forced to surrender? What does that mean? Here, this is statement, this is short sentence, expose everything the Muslim try to present to us to be absolutely false. The best for mankind are those who bring them with the chains around their necks till they embrace Islam that is Islam my friend Islam nothing but an ugly violent cult promote violent as a way to enforce itself on others it's a gang you know we gang and this is why the Muslim they keep talking about their, their big number you know they try to scare you you know do you know how, how big we are you know but thanks God they are big by number but they are small by power otherwise they will destroy the whole earth if the Muslims are the people who have the power of America the earth is gone if the Muslims have the power of Russia the earth is gone the only reason until now you are safe and secure in your, in your in your country if you are safe because Islam is coming to you from every door terrorism immigration etc and terrorists they are driving over your door even when you are home you sit in a coffee shop they go over you they run you by their cars so the Islamic peace for religion is the only religion today if we can say and you can do your own search causing the death of the biggest number of a human being in every country in the world if we go and study how many people get killed just last year in Europe because of Islam how many get killed because of Christianity how many get killed because of atheists how many get killed by the Hindus how many killed by the Buddhas then you will find that the only cult which is causing death and hatred is the cult of Islam how many people get killed in India? How many people get killed in Russia? How many people get anywhere you wish? Just go and search. So they try always to present for us things we can debunk it in, in, in less than half minute from their own books. This is what Islam is about. Who are they, those who carry the sciences, behead those who insult the prophet? Who is the one who attacked the cartoon maker and they slaughter them like goats in the name of Allah? And why the Muslim did not strike by millions against this? Because they approve it, they believe in it, they like it, they praise those. Those the one who did that is a hero. So we will not be, let people lie to us and don't let them lie to you. Lying is a very wide practice between Muslims because for them, in case you do not know, it is lawful for a Muslim to lie to someone as long the purpose is good, supposedly. And what is the good in that? Is to make you believe in Islam. That is a good purpose. This is how they see it. And you see, the lying purpose now, because now we cannot force you by the chain we don't have the power to bring you as a slave so now we don't have a choice except lying but in the old days the Muslims do not need to lie they say to you this is what Islam is about Aslam Tastam and Muhammad he said all over the hadith convert to Islam you will be saved otherwise we will kill you so in the beginning of Islam no Muslims need to lie and say to you Islam in peace that's a that's a garbage nobody will say that but this is something they do today because they are not the superpower when they are a a big a huge army and you are a weak nation they come to you and they put the chain around your neck and this is what they did even in Europe they took more than half of Europe where is the peace for Islam so my friend God gave you a brain use it use it or lose it 
So if we go back to the Muslim website to see how much really truthful they are in what they say, we will find that not there's no truth in that. Everything they mention in that website is absolutely a lie. And here you ask yourself a very simple question: why they lie? The answer is very easy. We cannot bring you in the chain around your neck. So now we have one way to go is lying to you so we can convert you. There's a video on YouTube about a Muslim Sheikh speaking about a good, amazing brother. He have a neighbor who is a Jew. By the way, I believe all those stories Muslim they mention in their TV stations are fictions. They lie. You know, I receive a call. I debated a Christian. I debated a Jew. Blah, blah, blah. So this guy, he have a neighbor supposedly who is a Jew, okay? And this neighbor who is a Jew, uh, the Muslim keeps saying to him, why you don't convert to Islam? The guy, he says, you know, there's things I don't like about Islam. As an example, I like to drink. So the guy, he said to him, who told you you cannot drink? You can. You can. He said, really, I can? He said, yeah, you can. Who told you you cannot? Drink as much as you wish. Now say shahada. To the guy, he said, okay, well, if I can drink and I can, well, I would say shahada, why not? Okay, so now he, he said shahada. After he said shahada, according to the story from the sheikh, it's in YouTube. I can even find it for you. The guy, he said, after, and now the brother, after he made this guy convert to Islam and he said shahada, after he finished taking the shahada, he said to him, listen, now you became a Muslim. So from now on, if you drink alcohol, we will whip you. The Jewish guy, he said, but you told me I can't drink. He said, yeah, I, can. I was talking about now, not later. <laughs> and the sheikh, he is praising this guy because he is... He saved this Jew from going to hellfire, my friend. I mean, look at this. So beautiful. So this, he is praising such an action because this guy, yes, he's a liar, but he made him convert to Islam. And now the guy, he cannot leave Islam. And he said to him, now you become a Muslim. You cannot drink. Otherwise, we will rip you. You cannot leave Islam. Otherwise, we will kill you. That is Islam, my friend. So don't make them fool you. This is this is a cult, whatever the word mean, and it is violent. It is uh, uh, satanic, and I challenge any Muslim to call me and to prove me wrong that Islam is not a satanic religion. Everything about this cult is satanic. Not a single statement in this cult is not satanic and we are here to challenge the muslims to prove what we say if you are a muslim you wish to call me please feel free i would be happy to have your life and people will listen to you and you can prove me wrong i mean who's holding you who's holding you Uh, please guys share share the YouTube with your friends there's a Abdul in the chat called Hassan okay you want to ring him in Skype he says his Skype his name is Hassan I don't know how to come find do you know how many people I have in my in my uh, Skype my friend Hassan I mean how in the world I'm going to find you I have I don't know. Do you know how many Hassan I have to? <laughs> so you have to give me a ring. At least text me and I will call you. All right? Yeah, I have hundreds of people on my Skype. Every, every day I open my Skype, I found like 20, 50 people adding me. I don't know how to even how to add them. I don't add everybody, you know? So you have you have to uh, you have at least send me a text send me a PM private message and I can ring you back but you can call me right away <clears throat> uh, there's no number Skype is not a number just search for debate TV debate TV one word there's no email what email 
No email. I don't use email. I don't email people. I don't receive email from people. I don't want that. I receive email sometimes, but I don't really. I cannot read them. I have to. I open my email. I get scared. I mean, it's endless. And most of the questions, sometimes it, it's funny. Where do you live? What do you do? You know. So search for the Bay TV in Skype. And uh, you will find it says like uh, debate TV from Saudi Arabia, etc. Add me, and I do not need to add you. Just call me. You know, you can just add me so you can call. All right. Any Muslim would like to call, please feel free. I would like to hear you. And I am not against you as a person. I'm against the cult of Islam, not you as a human being. For me, my Lord, the Messiah, He ordered me to love everybody, so I don't hate you. We've been ordered to love you and to uh, help you. If I see a Muslim in the street and he is injured, I will be so happy to help him. If he is homeless, to do the, the best to, 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 to help this person. If he is hungry, I will feed him. I will do my best for this is what Christ is about. So this is not against you as a person or you because your name is Muhammad or your name is Khalid. This is not the issue. We are debating the religion not you and me you and me is not in the uh, uh, in the course of debate all right hello <laughs> hello how are you hey mr hassan how are you doing doing good sir how are you i'm fine can you please mute uh, uh youtube just to just be sure there's no echo no, I've just done it right now, don't I? All right. Um, I can hear you. That's the main thing. Um, do you mind me asking you one thing? I came across one of your streams that was about a month ago. Mm -hmm. um, in regards to the Syrian episode with Turkey. I just wanted to get you Syrian, to Syrian what? Turkey. Syrian what? Sorry. It's with a single S, by the way, guys. It's Hassan, H-A-S-A-N. I'm just looking at the screen as well. Um, you had a program, a stream that you had done on your, um, I believe it's Christian Prince or something like that. It's the other, not Christian Prince, it's the other one, Arabian. Yeah, this is me. Prophet. Anyway, yeah, anyway. Okay, so? Yeah. Um, you had a thing on there and you said that um, you had an issue with Syria, the African region. Do you remember that one? It was about a month ago, and you did another stream a month prior to that as well. Yeah, tell me, so tell me what your question. Don't worry about what I said. Just tell me what your question. What's your question? No, what I was wondering is, um, do you still believe what Turkey's done there is wrong? You see, Turkey is an aggressive country, uh, and uh, it's a oh, it, it has a history of aggression all the way. And the Turkish, they always take advantage of a small, tiny countries around them. This is what they did to Cyprus. This is what they did to the Arab when they are weak. This is what they did to the Kurdish. And this is what they do to the Alawi. They always, uh, uh, you know, do genocide against the minority. It doesn't matter who they are. And they take advantage of them. And if they can even take their women as slaves, they do that. So Turkey never changed and will never change. And this Erdogan is trying just to uh, re-embrace the old way of the Turkish in the time of the Ottoman Empire and trying to invade others and using the Kurdish as an excuse to attack Syria. Otherwise, you know, the Kurdish, they never attack him there. Those are forces sure? they were fighting ISIS. They never attacked sure? it even once. Yes, I'm very sure. You see, there's two parties. Um, there's two parties. There's there's the Kurdistan party, Al Ummal, which is in Turkey. Can I just ask a favor from you? Sure. Please, pretty please. Okay. Um, you know, we have a good debate. It's always nice just to allow the other person. Yeah, to you asked me, I was right? answering you. you know, I asked you, you asked me, I was answering you. Yeah. I will always go quiet when you talk because I'm quite a respectful kind of guy to understand me. And it, it, I think it makes it more of a pleasant experience for the the listeners as well. Okay. You know, having two people talk over each mm. other, it's like school ground tactic. What I want to know is just pretty simply, every country, and I sincerely mean every country that is on the Atlas today, literally every single country that I know, mm. with the exception of, a very few and they tend to be very small colonies that you know it's not worth invading so to speak has had some form of genocide some form of slavery some form of atrocities 
some form of disgust in history mm. that they wish to is the history away. of Turkey today is better than yesterday um, to be honest with you, look, I'm not the biggest fan of Erdogan. I really am I'm, not. I'm not asking a question. I'm not talking about Erdogan, you know, because when the Turkish people, oh, they, they, vote, oh, they vote for him, when the Turkish vo people vote for him, if this is democracy and they are the one who vote for him, this is the Turkish, not Erdogan no more. Because if I vote for Trump, you know, if I am the vote for Trump, then I choose Trump. That's it. So now I'm asking you, is Turkey today is better than the Ottoman Empire before? This guy, he put tens of thousands of his school teachers in jail, judges, even the post office man, he put him in jail. He, he, you know, he released a lot of soldiers from, from the army. Every day we hear news about capturing, releasing, capturing. It's endless. He is using the cube against him as a way to control the country and destroy anyone he is, you know, he don't agree with him. And he is using supposedly that he is using law, but the fact this guy is a dictator and a Turkish people, and I'm assuming that you are a Turkish people, man. You uh, you know you voted for him, and he's a dictator, so you choose a dictator. Now no. I don't care really what he do inside his country. Now let us talk about your country invading Syria. All of us we knew that all all the fighters of ISIS came through Turkey. Do you agree? Yes. So, okay. How Turkey is an alien of the uh, NATO, and they are part of the NATO, and they they make speeches supposedly they are against ISIS. But you just said yes, it is Turkey who allowed ISIS fighters to come. That's mean Erdogan and his government they are ISIS too. So it's a terrorist government. Um, as the CIA is, as the MI5 is. No, 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 no. You see, no, no. Hold on, 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 hold on. Don't, don't mix things. Don't mix things. Don't mix things, my friend. Don't mix things. We have a government. We have a government here. No, no. We have a government. The CIA. They can do a secret operation. It's against even the law, and they are even against what the government you want. But, but I'm talking about a government, a president. You know. He stole all the, 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 the manufacture of Aleppo. All the cars, all the clothes, all the jewelries went to Turkey. You know how much, all the oil. And he is the one who was exchanging, he was exchanging oil and gas with ISIS. And this is why actually he is supporting one of the reasons with, uh, 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 with the goods of Turkey. So this man is an ISIS provider, funder, supporter, and your government is an ISIS government. And you are the one who uh, said, yes, ISIS came through Turkey. Why he allowed them then? Give me a reason why he allowed and them. And they also went through loads of other people that Turkey is mainly a main gate to go through. To okay, the, the main gate is more oh, important than other one. The main gate oh, is the most important. Mr. Prince, look, please. Look, I understand this is your show and I'm being very respectful here. But the one thing, as I said, it's quite common practice just to allow the other side to talk now if you want to just keep rambling on I'll, I'm I'll not rambling my friend don't insult me I'm not insulting you I'm telling you a fact no, and a person a person who opened door I'm not here just to talk and you talk for, for it's a, you can talk you can over you know you can talk in the same time no problem people they can hear us no listen listen I, I don't want to waste your time and I don't want to waste your time and my time now you said that Turkey opened open the gate for ISIS. Can you give me a reason? Okay, can you give me can you give me a reason? Can you give me a legitimate reason for you as Turkish people to allow ISIS to get in? Can you give me a reason? No, listen, we, we are not invading Syria. You are invading Syria. You, took, no, 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 you are not. invading Syria. What does that mean? You know, you send you send tens of thousands of soldiers inside Syria and this is not invading Syria. So what is that? Mr. Prince, if we wish to invade a country, mm. we will not. Uh, I can tell you this right now. I know a lot about Turkish history, mm. and the one thing that we do, if we're going to invade the place, we will flatten it. Ground you, level. You don't have the power to flatten it. You don't have the power to flatten it. That that is not true. That is not true. Turkey, Turkey, Turkey. Listen, Turkey is a very, very weak country. Turkey, Turkey is a very weak country. You can't flatten anything. You are you are surrounded by enemy. Listen, listen. You are talking to yourself now. Let me tell you your size, my friend. You don't dare to invade areas which is controlled by the Syrian government because that will make the Iranian flatten you. You are surrounded by the Russian, the Iranian, the Armenian, and the Syrian. All of them they are your enemies. So you can flatten who? They will flatten you before even you think about it. What are you talking about? 
Turkey is a bankrupt country. Number one business in Turkey is a prostitution, not making cars. Don't tell me about Turkey and don't tell me we flatten. You cannot. You are no one. Who are you to flatten anyone? Here we go, flatten. Let us see what you can do. So what you speak about the flatting is just showing me an image of a Turkish person who hate everybody. He think he is an empire and everybody around him is a cockroach. So look what he said. If we want to flat, if we want to invade the country, we will flatten the country. That is a fascist statement. You cannot flatten because the other areas is controlled by the Russian. And your president Erdogan is nothing but a puppy right now for the Russian kissing their ass and their shoe. Do he dare? Do he dare? Even the Kurdish area, he was allowed to enter because Putin, he said, go. Now, talk. What country is not kissing America's ass? All of you, America, or, Turkey, Turkey, me. Turkey me, is number yeah. one. Turkey is what number country? one. Turkey what is country? number one. Kiss the American ass. Your loan, your mortgage, your, your oh. money, all of it is coming from America. This is the truth. And you went, when Turkey went bankruptcy, after the earthquake, it was America and the only country give you money. So don't tell me. And who is the who is the one who kissed the ass of European? Turkey is the only country that's not gone through a recession. My friend, my friend, can you tell me how much your salary? Can you tell me? Can you tell me how much your salary is? How, can you tell me how much your salary in Turkey is? My brother, it's equates to what the living there is. <laughs> my friend, listen, no, you no, have no, no idea. That, I'll give you that, an example. That, if you get eight hundred pounds, I, I don't know. I don't. Anyway, you are changing my topic. This is not my topic. Just, just go. You know? right. look, look. that's it. I, I don't. You know, we have a topic about Islam right now. I don't care really for Turkey. Uh, your Turkish country is bankrupt, and your Erdogan is going to take you all of you to hell. That's exactly what's happening. <clears throat> Your your currency is dying. It's the fastest dying currency in the globe. You see, the currency of Syria after seven years of war is ten times better than the currency of Turkey. Go and see. Go and see what happened to the Turkey. The Turkey currency is equal to toilet paper today. So you invade who? The invasion they did actually in the Kurdish area is not for the sake of the Kurdish. It's for the sake of the oil. In that area, this guy, he hoped he can go and control the oil field again because now after they kicked ISIS, he didn't have oil for free. So now he tried to take over it, and but the American did not allow him, and he cannot invade the Russian area. He is so small, so tiny, like a cockroach to go over any and step at the foot of anyone. Do Erdogan dare really to, to, to attack the American? Do he dare to attack the Russian? When when the Turkish by mistake they 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 shot an airplane, Russian airplane, they kissed the ass of Putin to forgive them. They paid for the airplane, they paid their family, they opened their borders for the for the for the for the, for the uh, Russian product, and they signed an agreement with tons of millions of dollars to buy missiles from from Russia, which they don't even need because they are protected by the NATO. It was a bribe to Putin, so just please don't do anything to us. And now Putin is controlling all of Syria. And Erdogan don't dare to say anything. Putin is bombing his friend everywhere. Do, do Erdogan dare? Erdogan, he, he, he claimed that he is the one who presents the Islamic people. But do he dare to protect them? Do he dare to attack Russia for bombing the Muslims in Syria? You don't even talk about it. We don't even dare to fart. This is the truth. So don't don't waste your time. Erdogan is the best thing happening to Turkey. I'm telling you, and the way I'm seeing it, that because that will make Turkey divided. I don't want this country to be aggressive, ugly country no more. We are sick of that. And Erdogan is going to destroy Turkey as the country as we know it is going to be divided very soon. He put his nose in many bad, dirty issues. This guy, because of his stupidity, he made himself an enemy to the Saudi, an enemy to the Emirati, an enemy to the Bahraini, an enemy to the Kuwaiti, an enemy to Oman, an enemy to enemy to everybody. And don't forget, an enemy to Assad. And the Assad is the baby of the Iranian. And don't forget the Russian too. So now he have no friends. He's an enemy to America. He's an enemy to Europe. He's an enemy to everybody. This is the most stupid president ever you have in your history. 
the problem with this man he think he's so big when the fact he is a balloon all what Trump he need is just a little needle in his ass and he will make him fart all the gas he have what Turkey is about who is Turkey who is Turkey <laughs> it's a bankrupt country you see even when you want to go in war you have to have money war is money you cannot go in war and you are bankrupt it's not just about numbers when Erdogan used to make a speech about invading and, uh, and freeing Jerusalem, you want to invite a free Jerusalem, you want to fool who? Do you dare? You are buying their oil. You are buying, buying the gas of the Israeli. As we speak, there's hundreds of Israeli soldiers training the Turkish army. And you want to invade Israel? What a hypocrite liar. So he make a speech in front of those stupid Abdul Speaking about himself, I saw a dream. I saw a dream of myself in Jerusalem, and the voice of a river was calling me from underneath. Like you know, when the Muslim they hear this, oh, this is the, going to be the caliphate. He will free Jerusalem. This guy is a potato. Jerusalem is just across the border from you. Why he is attacking the Kurdish, but he wouldn't want to throw Jerusalem as long <clears throat> he make a speech about it <clears throat> because he's a potato. This is the truth. This is the truth. Now I understand you are a Turkish. You are trying to defend your country. No problem. But you are, you know, changing my topic. I'm talking about Islam. However, uh, Turkey is not even a Muslim country. Go to Turkey and see what you will see. Where is Islam in Islamic country? Where is Islam in Turkey? <laughs> this guy he keeps speaking about Islam, but if you go in Turkey, you will not find Islam. <clears throat> you know the problem most of those Muslims they don't see farther than their finger this is the truth all Islamic countries is like little cats attaching themselves to a big guy so Iran Syria uh, etc they are holding the feet of Putin Turkey is holding the feet of a Trump and they keep saying to him how oh, how oh, how oh. and then uh, Trump he looked down Supposedly they are barking, but the second he looked down this they are silent and it's so, so quiet Can you do something to the American here we go they are challenging you they are in members saying to you come to us How many time how many speech this Erdogan he said? That I'm going to take members go take it who is holding you <clears throat> go You don't dare He attack only weak people Afrin is a village have a couple of hundreds of fighters from the villagers who live there a hundred country a hundred million country population attacking a village what a shame what a shame and took him more than three months to take it and you know he said if we want to invade a place we flatten the place we'll try try you, you don't dare to do it I know you can flatten a village it's a village it's a village <clears throat> I mean, what a hero to flatten a village. You flattened the Armenian before, right? When they were weak and you killed a million and a half of them. We know that you are capable of crimes. We know what kind of mentality you have. But you are not powerful to do so no more because you are not alone in this earth and they will, be, they will eat you alive. You see, Erdogan, he announced from the first day in the war in Syria that he is against the Assad. He will take the Assad, he opened the door for the fighter, but the coward, he will not invade. He was sending ISIS and Al-Qaeda fighters, so he thought they would do the job, which he don't dare to do, because if he invades Syria, Iran will invade him. And he is no match in any mean, in any way with Iran. He don't dare to do so. So what he do? He used the stupid Abdul from Al Qaeda, from ISIS. He partnered with them, with the Prince of Qatar. The Prince of Qatar, he gave the fund. Turkey is the gate, is the highway, and they open the door for every scumbag terrorist in the world to come. And the funny. The president of Turkey is against ISIS and the CIA is the one who made ISIS, but he is the one who let them go inside his gate. 
I mean, who is the coward here and who is the one who worked for the CIA? If this is true, if the CIA, that's mean you work for the CIA yourself and you are a puppy of the CIA. The truth is so clear. However, Turkey today is in the stage of collapse. This guy, because of his stupidity, he left no friends for him. Who is the friend of Turkey? Nobody. And, and in order just to survive, he is bribing the Russian just to leave him alone. So he bought from them the S-400. Why he need the S-400? What is going to do with it? Uh, everybody knows that Turkey is part of the NATO and you do not need those missiles. For if you attack the Turkey, you attack the NATO. So why he's buying it? It's a bribe. It's a bribe by a money he don't have. He borrowed it from, from Qatar. <laughs> you see? Uh, the same as Qatar. You know, see, there's the Muslim Brotherhood. Turkey is a Muslim Brotherhood government. Qatar is a Muslim Brotherhood prince. All of them, they have one strategy. is to be a cat next to the dog. To be a rat next to the cat. To be a mosquito next to the cockroach. All right. We know the agenda and we know the stupidity of those countries. And look at them. Uh, the Prince of Qatar, he have a Jazeera TV who speak about Islam and speak about the Assad bringing Iranian to Syria. But he have the biggest base of American, Kufar American, Kufar American Christian like me. They have the biggest base on Qatar. Erdogan who make big speeches, Allahu Akbar, Takbir, Allahu Akbar. He have a huge basis of American in his country. Isn't it the Quran says, and the one who take them as a friend or a protector is one of them? So in the street, he is a Muslim president. In the back door, he is the puppet of the NATO. That is the truth. Now we go back to our topic. Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? <clears throat> do we have any Muslim would like to call us? And this is what they do, by the way. Bribe is the way to live. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, Trump, he just went in the White House, in front of the White House, he said Qatar is a sponsoring terrorism. What happened? Three days after, the Prince of Qatar come to USA. And he signed an agreement to buy 32 airplane, 100 missile, whatever, blah, 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 just to spend money. It's a bribe. And I will not be surprised if this, if this, if this order never been delivered, which means it's just a, a pure bribe to the US government, government. All the electricity, the water, the, the all the service, which means anything regarding the base of USA is paid by the Qatari government. You believe it? How much America is saving money? Not only they give them a base, their electricity is for free, their water is for free, their garbage collected for free, their, their, the street of the base are clean for free. All of this is paid by the Qatar. I mean, what what more you want? Because they are desperate. Please stay. Please stay. Because if you leave the Saudi, they will eat us. So look what happened because of the stupidity of the president of Turkey and the stupidity of the Muslim Brotherhood. Saudi, Qatar, Bahrain, Emirat, Oman against Turkey and Qatar. The Turkish, stupid Turkish president, he sent like 300, 500 uh, soldiers to uh, to uh, Qatar. Supposedly that will stop the Saudi from invading, <laughs> which is funny because nothing will stop them from invading except the American. What the 300 soldiers can do? And the second you invade as a Turkish, they invade Saudi, all the Muslim Sunni, they will take the Saudi side over your side for a very simple reason, the money. And they have the Muslim Sunni sheikhs who to sponsor the jihad against the Turkish. So the balance is not the side in the side of Turkey in anything they want to do. They are surrounded by enemy from in. There is more than 23 to 24 millions who they are not in favor to be part of the Turkish state who they are Kurdish. Add to that the Alawi, add to that other, other uh, uh, minority. So Turkey is going to collapse. It's just a matter of time. Maybe the coming earthquake. 
because this country is the country of a huge mega earthquake the last mega earthquake happened Turkey almost is gone it was America who saved Turkey they are the one who jump and give them the money they did the same as they did to the German before they made a marshal Uh, anyway, let us go back to our topic. You know, my voice is not really good today because I was speaking for long. Uh, if we have any Muslim want to call me, not to talk about Turkey, I don't care really about Turkey. I made a topic video about it. That is a video about it. Turkey is a is a lousy country. It had no no future, no economy. If not tourism, this country is bankrupt from long time ago, and actually already it's bankrupt. And the more this government taking over the country, the more the, the tourism is running away from Turkey because there is no human right, there's no freedom. And you know, you, you can go to Turkey today, you, you ain't in jail. All what the all what those guys they need you to, to accuse you with is anything. There's no there's no judicial system, there's no police, there's nothing. There's a mafia controlling the country. A postman, they accuse imagine a postman. A postman, they accuse him that he's support the cube. So He's a postman. What he can do? A teacher. I mean, he's a teacher. <laughs> Let us say somebody he made a coup, a coup, a coup, a, a, a coup against, against uh, uh, the government. And I am a normal citizen. And I say, I agree with it. So you arrest me. This Erdogan is, 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 is funny. It's funny and stupid. This is why he is destroying his country. Imagine how many people are angry against this stupid idiot inside Turkey so your enemy is number is a growing between even those who you call them Muslims in Turkey those who they are liberals in Turkey those who they are atheists in Turkey those who they are Kurdish Alawi whatever you name it this is why I say Turkey have no no future it's going to face a disaster I don't think it's going to be long from now very soon and time will tell let us see if I'm wrong or not Time always can tell what will happen next. Anyway, if there is any Muslim would like to call us, please feel free. Our topic is about 30 facts about Islam. Is Islam a cult? The answer is yes. Islam is an ugly, disgusting cult, and there is nothing good about it. And if you don't believe me, call me and prove me wrong. Anyone want to do so? No, no, Golan is not the problem of Erdogan. This is a lie, my friend. This is, he used this name just to take over his enemies. Golan is not because Golan is uh, Golan is the founder of Erdogan. Do you know that? <laughs> you know this is what those evil people are. It's, it's a it's a gang. It's a mafia. They he is he 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 ride in the shoulders of Golan to get into the government. He ride him. The same as the president of Sudan, he write another person. Always Muslim leaders, they do that. They write somebody, they write the wave. The wave, it was Islamic movement in Turkey. So we write the wave. Now we, we are in there, and this Golan was in like a challenge for me. So I what I do, I get rid of him. But this is not a problem. He used that person as a person, as a reason to delete all possible enemies. So he filtered the army, he filtered the police, he filtered the post office, he filtered the university, the teachers. I mean, even I saw in the news about the arresting a, a, a bunch of cook who work in a restaurant. Have you ever heard of a cook supporting a cube? <laughs> a cook. <laughs> That's a good one. Anyway. Uh, and, and that is uh, impacting the, the economy of this country. And now to make it more ugly, he just invaded Syria, uh, uh, for sure the, the part where I have a small, tiny uh, group of uh, Kurdish who they, they cannot fight an army. And even an army of 100 million citizens, imagine, took them a three month with the help of more than 24,000 member of Al-Qaeda and more than 15,000 from what it's called the Free Syrian Army. After all of those, it took them a three month. What kind of stupid plan this plan is? He's hoping that he can control those areas and he can get the oil from there. But trust me, 
the American they will not let you do so and the Russian they will not let you do so do we have any Muslim would like to call me is it true what you Muslims write in your websites about facts about Islam is it true that Muslims means anyone anything that surrender itself and the funny here says anyone or anything that surrender itself to the true will of God anything yeah Muslim they believe cats and dogs are Muslims even rocks Muhammad he said that when he walk in the street rocks they say to him assalamu alaikum which is a sign of madness rocks speaking to the Prophet and look what they say here number three Islam is not a new religion of or cult guys Islam is not a new religion or cult for sure Islam is not a new religion but is it a cult Islam is a copy paste of other belief exist before Islam it's a collection of many religion the Kaaba was exist before Islam Muhammad adopt the story of the Kaaba he neglected the Kaaba for long because he was think thinking or trying to make himself close to the Jews and the Christians so he was not praying to the Kaaba and he stopped visiting the Kaaba and he was not doing Hajj to the Kaaba and he was praying in the direction of Jerusalem but then when he noticed that the Jews and the Christians will never approve him, they knew he's a false prophet, he go back to his old tradition religion, which is worshipping the black stone and kissing the Kaaba. That is the truth. So is, and look here guys, Studies shows that Muslims are between 1 to 0.5 to 1.8 billion. How Muslims they calculate themselves? Let me tell you what they do. When they talk about numbers, they calculate all the country Muslims. If we go right now as we speak about Turkey, how many Muslim in Turkey there is? Go check it out. Night club, bars. There is no Muslims in, in Turkey. You can find Muslims in a conservative areas in villages. But if you go down in big cities, you don't find Muslims. Where is the Muslims? Where is the Muslims? The skirt, I remember when I was in England, our classroom is empty. Empty. There's nobody. Like we are 10, 11, 12 students. When there is two Turkish girls, they come to the class. All other classes, they join us in our class. Why? Because they are wearing nothing. Honest, honest to God, their nipples is coming out. Their short is not even a bikini. Even the teacher, he was, don't know, he don't, he don't even want to look at them because he's shy. And the way they talk, I mean, it's like, this is Turkish. So you go to Turkey. If you don't believe me, go right now. Type in YouTube Turkey. Type it. Type Turkey nightlife. Type Turkish bars. Just go. You go even to Asia, you know, you see people speak about Turkey. You will find the halal Turkish food next to go, go, a girl, boom, boom, uh, uh, women. Next, next door. Halal food. They want to sell halal food next to a bar. So the guy who go to the bar, he will go in the Turkish halal food. I mean, do you see how much halal it is? <laughs> Halal falafel. Anyway, so the, when the Muslims they count numbers, those numbers are very funny. How many Muslims really? And if you ask them, is the Shia Muslim? They will say no. Okay, let us take then 600 million Muslims out of the number. So why you are saying to me 1.5 billion? Why you lie? Is the Sufi are Muslims? No. Is the Ahmadiyya Muslim? No. Is the Druze Muslims? No. Is the Alawi Muslim? No. Is the Ismaili Muslim? No. So who is the Muslim? Where do you get the 1.5 billion or 1.8? So when it's come to numbers, they count everybody, including me. When it comes to details, you don't find Muslims between the Muslims. Now, Islam is not a cult. Okay, let, what does a cult mean? 
what is a cult let us see if Islam is a cult or not do you think a true religion of God will promise people that they will have God will will give them a penis which is endless is that a cult or what so Islam is not a cult huh but the God of Islam promised me endless penis Islam is not a cult, but Islam promised me 80,000 women to sleep with. Women who can see through their bones. And by the way, if you are a Muslim and you, you want to challenge me to show you those references of anything I say here, anything, call me. Anything I say here about Islam, you don't believe is true, and you are a Muslim, please call me and I will make you read it by your own eyes. Life as we speak in the screen. You see, I don't show myself as some people do because I'm not the topic. The topic is what Islam teach. So why you lie to us? Why? Any Abdul? And look here what they say. It is a universal way of life and civilization. You guys, it's a universal way to start cutting hands. This is a civilization. If somebody steal an egg, we cut his hand as long he steal the egg from a Muslim. But if he stole the egg from a Jew or a Hindu or a Christian, we don't cut his hand. He's a good guy. This is a way of civilization. If a woman commit adultery, we stone her to death. It is a way of civilization that if a man he insult the prophet, behead, behead him or crucify him, as the Quran teach. It's a way of civilization that if your wife, you fear that she is being disobedient, you beat the hell of her. Islam is the way of life of civilization. I mean, can you believe it? This is the way of civilization. <laughs> if this is the way of civilization, so what savagery mean? Huh? If this is the way of civilization, what savagery mean? What jungle mean? Have you ever heard of a monkey teaching his fellow monkeys to stone a monkey because she committed adultery? No, you can hear that in Islam. Have you ever heard of a religion believe that monkeys are Muslims? This is why they throw rocks at each other. You believe it? Maybe you will not. Let me show you because you might say I'm making things up. Right? The only religion believe that only even animals they are Muslims when they do violence. And how they notice that this monkey is a Muslim? They notice it because they are doing violence. And what they are doing, they are killing a monkey. Look at this. Even monkeys have to be aggressive, and this is the only way to prove them as Muslims. Look at this. This is one of the campaign of the Prophet. He is witnessing that monkeys are Muslims. How? And they practice Sharia law. Look at this. During the pre-Islamic period of ignorance, now, pre, during the pre-Islamic period of ignorance, supposedly the Muslim, they call Arab before Islam ignorant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, ignorant, right? Khadija, she was the boss of Muhammad because the Arab were ignorant. Uh -huh. uh, there was many queens who they are Arab queens uh, from, from that area. Like if you go actually not only Arab, other nations in the area like Yemen. Yemen used to have the queen, the, the queen of Sheba, you know, very famous women. What about Egypt, Cleopatra? You know, all of the ignorance, you know, this ignorance. Look what Islam brought. When Islam came, what happened? Khadija was was the boss of Muhammad after Islam what Khadija became So now They say I saw a she monkey surrender by number of monkeys if If me that's 
true story. I saw a she monkey surrendered by numbers or number of monkeys. They were all stone in it because she had committed sexual intercourse. No comment. And, and if you read the story details, you will not believe it. According to the story details, like here they are not giving you the story. I can't show you the story. By the way, any Muslim can call me anytime. Like if you want me to show you the details. According to the details, this female monkey, this guy was watching. And he saw her seduced by other monkey. He was behind the tree. And he said to her, hoo, 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 you know. Look like he have a banana or something, you know, or maybe his banana is bigger than the banana of the husband. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> and the monkey, her husband, the female monkey, her husband was sleeping over his arm. I'm just describing to you as he said in the hadith. So she lifted his head slowly and she went behind the tree and she did bang, bang, boom, boom, Allahu Akbar with the, with the, with the other monkey. And she had sex with the other monkey and her husband is still asleep. So until now things is safe He went back so she went back to her husband and then she put her hand under his head Then the husband he woke up and the husband monkey mr. Chapanzi when he woke up he <laughs> smell he starts sniffing, you know, you know, you know those the, the monkeys they sniff, right? I mean, come on, <laughs> you know. So he sniffed and he noticed that there is a smell of a sperm in his wife vagina. Oh boy! Put yourself in the shoe of this chimpanzee. Your wife, she cheated on you because other monkey, he have given her a banana. This guy, just to imagine how he looked like at that moment when he started thinking about what his wife she was doing. Where the smell is coming from? Where the smell is coming from? Man, oh man. He come to the conclusion that he did not have sex with her. Obviously, she was sleeping with someone else. And supposedly Islam is a religion of civilization and this civilization extend to the animal kingdom and this is why a monkey is they are a stoning monkey for she committed sexual intercourse with other husband <laughs> this is the civil the way the, the way of life of civilization that is the way of life of civilization. Hmm. Do we have any Abdul here? Any Abdul? It's very funny how the Muslims always they try to fabricate stories. And they imply that this is about Islam and now the monkeys are Muslims actually the Quran confirmed that all animals are Muslims and Allah will gather them in the judgment day to judge between them in the hadith Muhammad he said that Allah will judge between two goats one have a horn and the other one don't have a horn who is a Muslim want to call us
Anyone? Until now, we could not find one thing is a truthful in this article. Islam is not a civil religion. Islam is not good for any civilization. Islam, if you practice it wherever you go, things go backward. You see, why Dubai is advanced compared to other Islamic countries? Because Islam there is in the shadow. Bring Islam. Go, bring Islam to, to Dubai. Dubai will be empty. Why a neighboring country like Saudi Arabia is not advanced the same as Dubai? Because they have Islam. I just saw a video on the news. A girl, she was dancing in a studio, have no men, only women. And there was somebody captured her in video. The government announced the alarm. They have a meeting. The head of the sport, the stadium, everybody, the whole country is in, in like an unbelievable, disgusting. The girl, she did nothing. She was dancing in front of women. In the same time, those scam, if you go and see what the Saudi do, when they go abroad Saudi Arabia, they don't go to visit ancient buildings. Like if you ask a guy from Saudi Arabia, where you been? Did you did you visit the the, the Pharaoh tomb or no? Did you visit the museum? No, but he know every single bar in Cairo. During the month of Ramadan, I remember once I was in the Philippines. There was a Saudi guy. I, I think it was two. And he have I think two or three hookers with him, so uh, he ha they have hookers. You can tell you take, you can tell from their clothes those are hookers. You know, their skirt is not even one inch. You can see the panty without even standing. And he was asking the waitress if she have halal food. <laughs> Oh boy. I mean halal food is important now. He have whiskey in the table. They are drinking beer, huh? And now he's he, he don't want to eat uh, pork. He want to eat halal food. Do you have halal food? In the month of Ramadan, guys, the month of Ramadan, if you go to those countries, I assure you the majority of the visitors of those countries are Muslims coming from Saudi Arabia, from Kuwait, from Bahrain. Usually they are coming from countries where there's no freedom. You know what I mean? If if Ramadan, if Ramadan in that country give no freedom for you to live normal life, whatever you wish to do as a person who have a normal life, whatever it is, bad or good, then you will find them going and fleeing all the way to Philippines, to Thailand, to etc. You know, there is some Saudi, they, they almost fly every two or three weeks. They save some money. Each time they get a check, they take a vacation. Their job is not a job. They don't have a job. You know, uh, uh, the Saudi government made something stupid. They decide to make what it's called uh, Saudi. Uh, they want to replace the employment, uh, the, the manpower in Saudi Arabia by Saudi. And they are hoping that if we hire Saudi, we will save money and the Saudi they will get a job but they forgot that those are lazy people they are not good for work and they have no skills so after they start kicking out employees from foreign countries replacing them with Saudi then they notice that everything is slowing down everything is dead a Saudi guy he come at 10 o'clock then at 10 o'clock he worked until 11. At 11, he want to prepare himself to the noon prayer. <laughs> and he take 20, 30, 35 minutes to prepare for ablution. And then after ablution, he have to pray for like 10 minutes. And then after the prayer, he have to talk to his friends and he make some tea. They are not productive people because Islam is against being productive. How you can be productive in religion saying to you that it's obligation to, to, to pray five times a day? How you can do that? And if you don't do it, we arrest you. You pray at noon time, and now it's afternoon prayer. 
and now it is it's a turn a prior now a sense of type of prior now it's a, it is it is it is dinner a prior now it is how you can live your life muhammad he made the five a prior to keep them busy and not to think and as a way to control them and to to see to watch over them who is obedience for him who is not otherwise what is the point of five prayers five prayer or one prayer is the same and why you have to do it in a certain way what about you pray in your heart and because Islam is a way of civil life the Muslim they block the road or they put a blanket in the middle of the airport and they gather together and they pray and they scare the hell of everybody because they are civil somebody uh, ban this guy Wong please somebody ban him or block him yeah I would do it hold on okay now the five pillars of Islam by the way there's nothing is called five pillars of Islam <clears throat> Because if you read the five pillars of Islam, you will not find the word jihad. Jihad is the most important thing in Islam. It is the most important thing in Islam, but it's not in the pillars. So where is you got those pillars? What is the pillars? What is the pillars of Islam? Any Muslim can tell me? Are they really true? Those five they put for us there? Then the six articles face of Islam. Islam. Uh, those are not... The, the, actually, those are the most funny articles. You know? And look here, they add to believe in Moses and David. This is not what it says. To believe in the prophets, whatever. But in Islam, they will not tell you that Alexander the Great is a prophet too. Hitler, if he was exist in the time of Muhammad, Muhammad will make a chapter about him. This is why he made a chapter about Alexander the Great. What is the difference between Alexander the Great and Hitler? One was victorious and the other one he lost the war. That's all. In chapter 18 in the Quran, Muhammad is speaking about the Prophet of Allah. His name is Adul Qurnayn. Actually, I find it very funny how Muhammad he present his characters in his Quran you know like when you go in the Quran and you read the story you are expecting that God is talking and God bring bring knowledge and Allah he decided to tell us something like do you want to learn something okay they are asking you about the man with the two horn have you ever heard of a God he present a character a person by calling him the man with the two horn Don't this guy have a name? Who is the guy with the two horn? Any Abdul can tell us? Who is Mr. The man with the two horn? Who is he? Where we can find him? And they are asking thee about the man with the two horn. Okay. Who is he? Now Allah is talking, you expect him, like the historian Allah is going to give us some of the of the un unknown history. Hmm? Look what he says. They ask thee concerning Zulkarnayn, what, what, if, what, what if you do first start saying his name? What's his name? What's Zulkarnayn? A man with a two horn. It doesn't even say an, a man. It, it might be a beast. Who, have you ever, how we will know that this guy is a man even? Because it says the person, the, the, uh, the one with the two horn. How we will know who is the one with the two horn? So now Allah decide to tell us. Hmm, I will rehearse to you something of his story. Ooh. The history. The history is going to be revealed. The unknown history of the Dhul Qurnayn, the one with the two horn. Verily. We establish his power on earth. 
if if if, if Zulkarnain was victorious because of Allah, even the victory of Zulkarnain was coming from Allah. Alexander the Great was victorious because he was a Muslim. Are you sure? <laughs> That's <a> true story. <laughs> Hmm. Do we have any Muslim want to give us a call? Are you sure that Zilkurnain, Alexander the Great, he was a Muslim and Allah gave him victory? Okay, let us continue. He was doing jihad. One such a way he followed. Now he, Allah, he started. Oh, hold on, this is need the back background and music. Zilkarnain he follow away and he keep walking 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 and walking and walking and he keep talking and walking commercial break if you are going in a business trip and you like to fly to where Zulkarnain used to go please contact us our our travel agencies Zulkarnain travel agency is the best we provide you limousine with all kind of entertainment we cannot tell you exactly what is inside the limousine but you know better call us right now and get your discount for strangers we charge usually $1,000 because you are our friend and you listen to Christian Prince, we will charge you only two thousand dollars. Continue. Now Zulkarnain, he was walking and walking and walking and walking until what? I mean, look at the surprise until when he reached the setting of the sun. Like what the heck? The setting of the sun. Hold on, hold on, hold on, shut up, come on. Show respect, man. This is history. I mean, what's wrong with you? This is history. Allah is telling us a true history. This is not a joke. This is a true history. You know, this is what's wrong with people. This is true. A proven by science. And actually, he reached the sitting place of the sun. The translation here is not really true. He found the sitting place of the sun. Let me show you. Mm, yeah, here we go. We just to change the translator. Look at this. Till when he reached the sitting place of the sun. Wow, wow, mean all my life. I want to find that. Actually, to be honest with you, on my previous trip, I went and I tried to reach where the sitting of the sun. And what I found, I mean, I was unlucky. It was a cloudy day. <laughs> And I was late, so I could not find where the sun set. I mean, they told me go, keep going, keep going until you reach the ocean. So I keep going, I keep going, I keep going, and then what? I went there. It was a cloudy day, and this is not even fair. But because Allah He got He gave His blessing to Zulkarnain, He was able to find where the sun set. Otherwise, we cannot find normal people. We cannot find that. This is only was a blessing from Allah to His Prophet Zulkarnain. Can you find where the sun set yourself? No. Can I find it? No, I just shown you even a video I took myself. We cannot find that. This is only happened by the will of Allah, only for Allah who he wanted them to find it. So Zulkarnain, he was really lucky because Allah, he gave him the honor of such a discovery. Do you see the benefit of being obedience? That's amazing. 
otherwise you would end like me see in the ocean and you see where the Sun we don't see where the Sun sitting and this is not right so if we go back here in the story which is I find it very astonishing amazing story <clears throat> how I mean how lucky this man to find where the Sun said but Abdul as I know the Sun is going to sit where I live right now even I am sitting in my chair not going anywhere and I'm going to see where the Sun set so what your God mean he found where the Sun said <laughs> And remember, Islam is a religion for as a way of life for all the all civilization. Okay, all civilization now they should go and keep walking a road until they find where the sun set. And what happened after that? The story is not over. Until when he reached the sitting place of the sun, he found it sitting in a muddy spring. Like, look at this. I mean, that why the is a sun is a pig? I mean, why the sun is going us in a, in a muddy spring? Why? Any Abdul? I am a truly, truly convinced that this is history and this is a true history coming from the true God. Look, everything there is a fact. Let us put our facts straight. And you know the funny the Muslim they say to you no 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 he is saying that it appeared to him that he found the Sun sitting in the mercury it, it doesn't say that Abdul stupid don't lie the one is there is not even the one is talking until now is Allah Allah said I'm going to tell you about him he found it he found it who is talking Allah he is not saying he found it if as it is like and he thought no he is telling us a fact which is supposed the scientific fact he found it sitting so they try to hide this disaster and you know the funny in the Muslim website they say Islam is not a cult one of the signs of cults is to say stupid things stupid things the Sun set in the murky water Any Abdul? This is the chapter of Al Kahf, Al Kahf, the cave, the cave chapter. Actually, I advise all of you to read the chapter of the cave because it is the most hilarious, stupid chapter in the Quran. It ha it has a collection all of the f like flying carpet stories, all the fiction stories. Unbelievable! I love it. This is my favorite chapter. There is two things I like in my life: falafel and the cave chapter. Do we have any Abdul have any comment? This is a religion. This is a religion. And this is what we should believe that Allah is telling the truth. Falafel at least is something real. I like falafel. It is yummy, it is vegetable, it is good. I mean what what we will learn from this stupid Quran? What is the benefit of Islam? Islam teach us history, wrong history. Science, wrong science. Even the fiction is stupid. God, he's, he gave Suleiman flying carpet. Hold on, hold on. Do you guys, do you know what Suleiman used to drive before the flying carpet? I am vegetarian. Yeah, I'm a vegetarian. I eat only uh, like beef. Uh, but because you know, let me prove to you that I'm vegetarian. Okay, this is I will use the Islamic logic. The cow eat the grass, and I eat the cow. What does that make me uh, vegetarian? Thank you. See, I, I hope you are convinced now. So now let's go back to the Muslim to, to Allah logic. So based in Allah logic, who is telling us things we do not know? And Islam supposedly in the Quran is going to explore for us secrets which we nobody knows. Nobody knows. I mean, this is amazing.
This is like this is a secret. This is like discovery. Somebody called the, the Dr. Phil. I wonder why Dr. Phil he lost his hair. This guy he lost his hair. He did not see this yet. What he would do if he have if, if he see it? I think his hair will grow. This is God talking. That's amazing. It's it's too much. I mean, Allah is beyond imagination, my friend. <sighs> Do we have any Muslim would like to call me? Do we have any beautiful Muslim, any handsome Muslim? Do you know why I say beautiful Muslim, handsome Muslim? Because according to Muhammad, Muslim woman, she is not allowed to shave her mustache. Muslim man, he should trim and shave his mustache. I mean, have you heard of religion is upside down? Women, they cannot shave their hair from their face, but the man, he should do it. I mean, what's wrong with this, Muhammad? If a woman, she take hair from her face, Allah will curse her. A Muslim man, he should, he should take hair from his face. This is why I'm saying that there is any beautiful Muslim man, any handsome Muslim man? Because it's the up is upside down. I mean, what the business of Allah? If a woman she grow, uh, she shake, take hair from her face. Why? Why Allah is happy to see a woman have a mustache? Hmm? And you know the funny. You ask the Muslims why the Hadith says, brother, because you are changing the creation of Allah. Okay, when you do circumcise, aren't you changing the creation of Allah? Hello. Allah created you with little peace. Why you take it off? Not only for the male, even for the female. Huh? And why the man, he can cut his hair and he can shave his mustache, but the woman, she cannot. Isn't it? This is a change of the shade. Look at Allah. And why Muhammad used to color his hair? Muhammad want to be a redhead. He don't like to be. He forbid the Muslims, by the way, from dyeing their hair black you can go right now and search on google it is a haram to dye your hair black i mean have you ever heard of a stupid religion like this this is why the muslims if you notice they dye their hair red unbelievable guys i want to make my hair green because black is not allowed it's haram red i don't like it i will look like an onion I think because everybody go green I'm going to go green man and you know what I walk in the street and people they will say the green man the green man that's that's hilarious that's so unbelievable that's unbelievable I mean the wisdom of the Prophet is above all kind of wisdom and he's dying I mean the way he dye his hair if I don't want to go there I don't want to go there we better not to go there please leave me alone do we have any Muslim here? <clears throat> hmm? This is so, okay. Hold on. Let us go back to the article. I mean, why we are changing the topic? You guys, you see, you guys, you are taking me away from my topic. I mean, because I'm naive and I am an Arab, you take advantage of me, huh? And the other day you told me go and buy shampoo. I went to the store. I told them I want shampoo. And they said to me, there's nothing. It's called shampoo. We have shampoo. Why you told me shampoo? If it is shampoo. Anyway. We, we, the Arab, is the one who brought civilization to everybody. Mm -hmm. As an example, al Qazafi he said that Isper Shakespeare, his real name is Sheikh Isper. And I know that from the beginning, by the way, but I did not notice. I was waiting for somebody to help me to notice that. So Al-Qazafi, may Allah bless his soul, uh, he was so smart and he noticed that Shakespeare, his real name is Shakespeare. He's an Arab. Yep. 
and uh, Al Ghazafi he said that the word democracy this one even coming from the Arab and he said the original of the word or the meaning or the sentence it is democracy in the Libyan accent which means bring the chairs this is true <laughs> not only that shut up not only that you can go right now and search in YouTube and you will find there is a documentary paid and sponsored by the Muslim propaganda that the one who discovered Australia is the Arab <laughs> mm -hmm. and the one who discovered America is an Arab too <laughs> and not only that hold on hold on oh not only that the Muslim they have documentary made by Al Jazeera. They say that the red the, the Native American Indian they were Muslims too. <laughs> and why all of this happened? Now let me explain to you why everybody was a Muslim. All of them they used to be Muslim. The American native Indian, the Australian, this is what the Muslims saying, they used to be Muslims, okay. What happened, how they left Islam, I will tell you. They read, did read this verse. They did read this verse, my friend, and they lost their hair. How stupid Allah is. Allah is saying that the sun set in the murky water. That explains why they left Islam, my friend. Okay, I got it. Okay, okay, let me tell you something. Do you know that the Prophet, peace upon him, he said that everyone is born as a Muslim, and this is proven scientifically, and I will prove it to you. Everyone is born as a Muslim. My mom, she said, I don't know if it's truthful or not. Sometimes it's hard for me to believe it, to be honest with you. But this is what she said. That when I used to be a baby, I used to do poo, -poo in my diaper. And this is a clear evidence that I was a Muslim at that time. And don't think I am making fun of anyone because I can show you right now the reference that before Islam, before Islam, before Muhammad, Arab do not know how to do poo poo. And I'm serious about that. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I see somebody, he don't like what I said. He, th he thinks that this is not true. Let me show you, my friend. I don't lie. Trust me, I don't lie. The hadith says that the Prophet, he taught us everything. You know what al-khara means? Excuse my language. Shit. Hmm? But the Prophet, he have tons of hadith teaching the Muslims how to do shit. Read with me carefully. It was narrated that Sulaiman, Salman said, a man said to him, your companion, me and the prophet, P -B -P, no, P -B -U -H. I think this is kind of a chemical thing, even teaches you how to do shit. You see here, they say the word uh, to toilet. It doesn't say that in Arabic. It says Al-Khara, al -ghayt. You see in Arabic, here we go. Hatta al -khara. You can copy the word right now in Google and you will see khara means shit. So the prophet, he was certified shit teacher. I mean, that's amazing. Unbelievable. This is a very clear sign that he's a prophet. Who can beat that? I mean, who can beat that? Be honest. This is the only prophet he can do that. He is certified by God to teach us how to do shit. Before him, nobody do shit.
I think the Arab, my grand, grand, grand ancestors, they used to do shit from their nose before. I'm not sure. I mean, here we go. He taught them how to do shit. I wonder how they used to do it before. I, I think I think they used to do it sleeping, maybe, or upside down. I mean, I don't know how the prophet he did that. <sighs> the word Arab marriage, zawaj, zawaj. Do do we have any Abdul? Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? Anyway, I'm really convinced. Actually, I feel like almost I'm converting to Islam because badly, badly, I need to go to the bathroom right now. And now, who is going to help me in this scenario? And you know, do you know that the Prophet, he said, before you go to the bathroom, you have to say a certain prayer, otherwise shaitan will play with your anus. And this is proven scientifically. Uh, hold on hold on and the funny the funny Don't change topic as we can talk about about nikah later nikah and the word later just wait come on I mean we finish the shit first <laughs> Excuse my language come on. We have a very hot topic here. I mean do you have better topic to speak about more than shit? This is the prophet here Hello Hello Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I do. How are you doing? Very good. I'm uh, the person who's called Sneakers Corner. Okay. Are you a Muslim, my friend? I'm not a Muslim, no. Oh. I have a, a theory that Muhammad was actually an Irish monk. He was an Irish monk. That's interesting. Okay. Tell us about it. Okay. So in the 5th, 6th, and 7th centuries, hmm. there was a strong connection between Egypt and Ireland. There was monks going back and forth <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, there's lots of archaeological and, and uh, documentary evidence for this mm -hmm. and so what I believe is in the 590s okay. he went to Egypt and visited lots of different monasteries and mm -hmm. he became a heretic and moved to Petra mm -hmm. and uh, I've translated some of the Quran back to Gaelic and found that it is very poetic in the original Gaelic so what I believe is he preached in his Monastery and his monks okay. translated. Uh, let me ask you a question. Arabic. What what was the language of Muhammad? Because you said he's an Irish monk. Um, Gaelic was his language. What does that in Gaelic mean? Is that like a kind of English well, now or what? It means it means Irish. Irish. But it's, how come Muhammad yeah. never said one Irish word? Isa. Isa, Isa, Isa is, is an, an Irish. Irish word. It means Jesus. No, this is coming from the Greek. You know, Isos. No, no, no. Um, the only, the only. Um, Christian group in the world that uses Isa, hmm. actually, not not just hypothetically, but actually in liturgies, is hmm. actually Irish people. Because I'm an Irish person, we have prayers using that word, but you won't find any other country in the world that actually uses it in that way. Okay. Um, I don't think he invented okay, but, the word. But, but, I think, but now, let I us think say, he used, so I think he used it that way. Okay, my friend, I don't know what's your name. Uh, can no. we can we judge? Can we say Muhammad was an Irish because just one word? No, 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 I have more evidence. Okay. Um, so like, like what? I've studied, okay, so I've studied Breton law, which is an ancient Irish law that's about 3,000 years old. Okay. And the laws are totally like Sharia law. What I believe he did was he borrowed Breton what, law. What, and is a, what is a Sharia law? What do you know about a Sharia? What is Sharia law? Uh, well, I'll give you one example. The, the, the law which said that well everything are allowed everything to everything everything in Islam is a copy of somewhere else so if you are saying you yeah. found that this is existing somewhere that would not make any difference anyway because er everything in Islam is a copy from somewhere the prayer yeah. is a copy of somebody the abolition is a copy of somebody stoning women is a copy of somebody yeah so there is nothing uh, what you are saying now have nothing to do with Islam still because Islam is collecting from other religion but not from one religion well, I would argue that this monk um, 
Okay, let me ask you. This those yeah, Irish okay. people they are considered as a Christian. Yeah. Okay. So he was an Irish monk from a Christian sect. Yeah. Do they believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit? Yes, but I believe he became a heretic. Okay. Um, so he was he was one of those, and then he changed. You mean? Yeah. Okay. He read Gnostic texts when he went to the monastery in uh, Mount Sinai in Egypt, for example. Okay. Um, and so he. There was also a Julian heresy at the time, which denied that Jesus' body corrupted. Um, yeah, there is, there is, there was many. There was many. This is not very. Yeah. But, but you see, uh, I, I'm not against you to to uh, of what you are saying, but there is no proof of anything of what you said because uh, uh, saying that Sharia law uh, is close to other belief. Muhammad is a collection of relief. Muhammad he took from the Arab the pagan black stone, the Kaaba. He took from the Christians Mary. She was a virgin. He took from the Jews, stoned it to death, yeah. and he took all the fiction story about the legion of the Jews, like the flying carpet of uh, Suleiman, etc. Uh, yeah. He took the abolition from the Sabian. Uh, he took yeah. Ramadan from the Sabian. So yeah. we cannot yeah. really, Can I, because if, if if that will make me believe that Muhammad, let us say, Muhammad and the Christian they share that Mary was virgin, but does that that does not mean Muhammad is a Christian? That's number one. Muhammad, oh, he took, okay. he took from I, the, Arab, the black stone. Yeah, but, but I'm saying to you, he grabbed from everybody. But that's me. Muhammad is from everybody. And how you can say that he used to be, he used to be, how you can prove to me now that he used to be from those Irish. Okay. And then he changed. Well, okay, here's the thing. Um, one of the things that Irish monks did in the sixth century was they were, um, uh, what's the word, for jurists. So in other words, they were the ones who dealt with the Breton law. There were lay people as well. Mm -hmm. um, another uh, thing is because Irish scribes read and copied lots of different texts, they would have had the relevant knowledge to be able to talk about all of these stories. Um, Irish monks were very open-minded and they read pagan uh, stories in a way that, for example, St. Jerome would never have done. Um, and so um, the other thing is that at that time, paganism was still present in Ireland. And so a lot of Irish people were a mixture of Christian and pagan. Mm. And so there's this dualism in Irish culture that even still exists. Irish people curse others even today, the same way as Muhammad did. So I see an awful lot of parallels that help explain how this weird religion started. No, you see, I still I don't agree with you because, as I said, there's nothing to link them except you are just making assumption that's okay he there, there's something here to share but this guy he shared with everybody this muhammad let me tell you how it is muhammad when he sat with the jews he tried to present himself as a jew so he said to them i believe in Moses, i believe in abraham he said with the christians he said i believe in isa i believe in mary he said with yeah. the sabian he said with sabian you go to heaven i believe in a sabian he said with the with the people who worship the, the three daughters of allah he bowed down for them and he prayed for them. You know the story of the satanic verses, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. this guy is hypocrite. He is not really, he is not a heretic. He is just a liar. He, oh, he's certainly, uh, yeah, he's yeah, certainly a liar. In but you see, hypocrite. heretic, heretic is someone, and I think you know, you, you speak a lot, a lot better English than mine. English is not my first yeah. language. Heretic, as I know in English, is somebody he believes in something, and but he is out of out of line from the main religion correct yeah but i think it's like a, a very yeah but like muhammad is not that severe one but muhammad is like but muhammad is not that one muhammad muhammad as i said because you see heretic he he have one line to follow right okay he said let us say uh let us say he is as you said there's a, a irish monks but those irish monks they believe in certain things but he go out he said like okay jesus is not uh, not god okay but this is not the case Muhammad, he added tons of things coming from other religion. Why? Because yeah. simply he is a hypocrite liar. He don't believe in anything. He know he's a false man. That's why he made a chapter for him saying that Allah told me that any woman she can give herself for me so he can F her. That is yeah. not from a heretic person. That is a, from a one is using God, whatever yeah, that God absolutely. is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, what, what I mean, like a, a chart of a, a specific word to describe how he went, he, he basically... Um, left Christianity and formed his own using all the ideas that he had picked up. But I, I'd like to share some some further evidence, if I may. Sure. Um, Go ahead. There's a document that was sent to the monks in St. Catherine's Monastery next to Mount Sinai, which the Sultan 
um, took and brought back to Turkey. Um, but the monks have a copy of it. It's called the Ashtinami. Have you ever heard of that one? Yeah, but I think it's fake. I don't think it's real. Oh, well, it could be. But here's the thing. Yeah. At the top of it, there are, at the top right, I believe, it's a drawing of the actual monastery in, in Dingle because it matches it perfectly and it shows a standing stone. And that's significant because the standing stones next to it in Dingle has an Egyptian um, inscription on it. It's a it's an image of an Egyptian fan that the Egyptian monks used to fan themselves. And the bottom image in it is a, a building which can be found in the monastery in uh, Mount Sinai. So I think, and also the fact that he didn't write himself, no, he no, got no. Alan this, this is, this is, this is to write it suggests that he didn't know the language. Yeah, let me explain to you. This, let, this is first. You see, there's many, many... Uh, places they fabricate documents saying this has given us anonymity or protection from the prophet to protect themselves so there's many they used to do that like that the, the rules okay, yeah. the ismaili etc so they they used to say uh, the sabi and so uh, uh they, like the, the sabi and they fabricate a document that the caliphate in certain time he gave them immunity against uh, paying jizya or uh, to kill them so those are things are very normal to happen at that time and especially those arab who do not know even how to read how to write you know? Okay. So if I ask if I if I ask you, yeah, um, what does the phrase Allahu Akbar means exactly in English? Can you tell me? Akbar mean bigger. Bigger. Okay. Yeah. Now, if you say it in Gaelic, it is Allahu Akbar, which means not just bigger. Is it means is on top, is supreme. Do you, do you but, follow me? But this is not the so meaning. Allahu Akbar. If it, if it was transliterated into the nearest phrase in Arabic. Is actually not as powerful as it is in the original. Okay, Gaelic. in in the language you are talking about in the Irish yeah. language, do they have the word Allah? Um, Allah, I believe, is has is been constructed from the moon god. No, no, I'm asking you. Okay, yeah, but I'm asking you. Do, there, do, oh do yeah, they, sorry, do they one, have? one other thing. There is in the Dingle area. There is a, a local god, a sun god, called Lu, and so it's possible that it started off as Unlu and became Allah, the an Arabic equivalent, possibly. You know. No, I, I don't know. Like for me, I cannot find anything to back up what you are saying because uh, Allah, as you said, uh, it contained two words. It's A L, which it's a word meaning God, and then La is the moon god, and Akbar. Yeah. Akbar simply there was an as statues or God. His name is Akbar. So the the uh, and then uh, Muhammad because he came supposedly to merge all the gods together and make them one God. So Allahu Akbar became one. Uh, but but uh, uh, about uh, the Irish and this story, you know, for me, for you, it makes sense. I don't know. For me, I don't see anything. There's no connection because yeah. there's no Allah first. Like if you say to me, those Irish, they have the word Allah and they have the word Akbar and they have the word Muhammad and they have etc. Then I will say, or maybe at least Allah, you know, at least Allah find it there. Yeah. But there is no. But Allah. I think the, I think the, just to interrupt you a second. I think the the, the words, whatever the original was. He could have used certain Arabic words, but no, no, majority but you see, of what Allah, he said was, was Allah, Gaelic, but translated into Arabic. Allah is not Arabic. Allah is not Arabic. Allah, A-L, is an Aramaic, old ancient Aramaic, and La is an old ancient Aramaic. So as I said, the, the Arabic... Well, that's, that, the, sorry, that fits in with what I'm saying with uh, Syriac monastery, like Aramaic is, is yes, yes. You see, equivalent the, the, to Syriac. The, the Arabic itself, my friend, the Arabic in the Hebrew are nothing but a born out of Aramaic. You know, so like, uh, who's Abraham? Abraham is an Aramaic man. So in the time of Abraham, there was no, there is no, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, Hebrew. Hebrew is a newborn language because those are the children of Israel. After that, they start speaking Hebrew. Hebrew is the same as the Arabic, is born out of other language. Arabic is more mixed from the Hebrew. Arabic is a collection of many languages, but the major language impact in it is the Aramaic. This is why there's many verses in the Quran. Muslims themselves cannot and explain why, because it's written using Aramaic words. And actually, yeah. there is some uh, theories uh, speak of uh, that the Quran in the beginning it was totally Aramaic, and the Arabic version of it is what we have today. Uh, yeah. I will not be surprised with that. But yeah. the theory... Just give, can I give you another example? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay, so Surah One Hundred Two. The name of it is, as I would pronounce it in English, <laughs> At Takatur. Now, if you treat that as a, as a Gaelic word, it, um, AT is closest to Och, which means place, 
and then Takatur is Choch Aher, which means house of the father. So it's a place of the house of the father or equivalent to heaven. Um, I'm only at the, t at, you know, at the tip of the iceberg here because I haven't. Oh, yeah, there's one other one like An Angel obviously has a Greek connection, but Angel in Irish is, is very close to it. It's much closer than the Greek is. Okay, let's go you by know, one. So that, uh, you said yeah. chapter Quran 102. Yeah, the Quran. title, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is yeah. Attacator. Attacator, yeah. What does yeah. that mean in Irish? What is so in Irish, it would be it would mean uh, basically a, a poetic way of saying heaven. It's like no, the, you see, the house of the father. At the cathor, at the cathor here is busy, being busy with having kids. You know, you are busy with with the uh, with multiplying with kids. This is what at the cathor mean. So okay. this is you know, so and maybe that, just questions. And and the verse after it confirmed that you know, and this is why like you keep like, you know going visiting the graveyard, etc. So don't 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 you know don't uh, really. I, I think this is not not uh, in the right direction for you. I appreciate that you are trying to study and trying to search, but I think you went so far. Uh, if there is similarity, like the word in jail as an example, it's a Greek word, and this is additional proof that Muhammad is a thief. And here, here actually, here there's a question: if Muhammad is a person who is coming to announce to us Isa as a Hebrew messenger, correct? And he was a messenger, yeah. he was sent to the Jews as the Quran confirmed. So why he is using the word Injil, which is a Greek word? Because because Injil, that's mean Isa, he was a prophet for the Greek. Because yeah. remember the Quran says, I never, I never send a messenger except he speak in the tongue and the language of his people so they might understand. So it doesn't make sense that Isa is a messenger of God to the Jews, but yet his book have a Greek name. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, I totally agree with that. Yeah. yeah. So this is this is additional proof that Muhammad is nothing but a collection of religions. Yeah. He well, I, think he's, he, I, I think he's a, a he's a master syncretist. In in you know he's literally just taking ideas um, from lots of different religions, mixing them together and putting his own. He, he, ha he has nothing. This guy is an empty. You know. He announced himself as a prophet, and now yeah. he's confused. In the beginning, he started to to to, uh, to to join the Sabian, because in certain times, Sabian they were the major religion in the Middle East. Sabian yeah. today they are to, al almost unexist, you know. But yeah. in a certain time, you you were mentioning the Egyptian, right? The Egyptian actually, there's many proofs and reference that the Egyptian they were Sabian too, and this is why the Sabian they hated the Jews. Like there's there's a prayer in the in the Sabian book against the jews and their god adonai and they make yeah. fun of them they call they say their god adonai the evil who taught them to do circumcision and why they hate the, the jews the, the sabian because the sabian uh, they agreeing with the story of the pharaoh and they believe in it look like there is witnesses of their nation of what happened and they believe that the god of the jews who is evil for them he destroy the, the kingdom of the pharaoh which is a sabian kingdom you see, so yeah. Muhammad, Muhammad is a person. He don't have a religion. Like if I, I can go, you I show you details, uh, starting from the fasting. Muhammad was looking for a fasting. First, he started fasting like the Jews. He heard he was entering a city of the Jews, and he he heard them. They fasted three days. So he said, "What is this a fasting?" They told him, "This is the fast of Moses." So he said, "Okay, you know what? I am more close to Moses than you." So he started fasting the fast of Moses. Then uh, there's a fast of Ashura. He started fasting the fast of Ashura. Then he heard of the fasting of Ramadan. He quit Ashura. He quit the fasting of Musa. He started doing Ramadan. So he was looking. This guy is looking for ideas to add to his religion. Same for well, that. Them. That that may that all may be fictionalized. You know the hadith records. Is, is, um, I I would argue that hadith was and very... Quran, hadith and Quran, they they confirm that. You know. And we cannot confirm, well, I, I, confirm anything sorry. out of. I, out I would of argue Islam. that fasting is actually part of the Breton law. You can actually no, no, make but demands Ramadan, on people. No, no, but, but Ramadan is the fasting of the Sabian of thirty days. Yeah. Okay. So it's a it's a borrowed idea. But and, and the, and the Sabian and the Sabian. Irish culture at the yeah. Time. No, and the Sabian. You know, when they when they fast Ramadan, they they start the fast in one city, and then they end the fast in another city. Why? Because they believe that the new city will receive a new moon. This is why Muhammad he says, "Women shahid amikum shahr," you know. So the one who witnessed uh, the 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 crescent moon, he fast. 
so Muhammad he adopt exactly the same idea of the Sabian of Ramadan how they fast how they in in in, in fasting so whoever of you in uh, or so, sorry whoever of you witness Shahr Ramadan you know he have to fast and whoever witness of you the moon again he have to stop fasting this is exactly what the Sabian they do so and Muhammad in the hadith was called Sabian too they thought he's a Sabian so there's tons of reference and you know the Muslims today if you if you read the translation as an example if you go to chapter 2 verse 185 the Muslim they will say to you that the word shahar mean uh, a month but the fact the word shahar have nothing to do with month the word shahar is a word uh, coming from the Aramaic which mean moon so whoever of you witness the moon whoever of you witness the moon you don't witness the month nobody can see the month the month is time we don't see the time whoever of you witness the moon and this is how the Muslim makes sense right because the Muslim this they start fasting by seeing the moon so whoever of you see that moon have to fast it now how we do that by the moon we start by the moon we stop and this is exactly what the Sabi and they do you can go well, right can now I, can I, you can go just to make a connection there yeah, go ahead. Um, it was a, it was a practice under Breton law that if someone owed you money in Ireland you fasted uh, under the moonlight you fasted all the way through the night till the morning to enforce the payment of whatever yeah, but was this is this is one month this is not the one night this is a three thirty days oh, yeah 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 this is yeah but I, I think like you, you he he left Ireland with sort of basic yeah, no, no. pagan see, ideas that fasting, he just developed my friend fast, in encounter fasting, with other religions and so on yeah fasting is exist in many religion as a way to practice yeah. and control yourself I, and supposedly it, it, the fasting is not about just repenting it's about to learn how to control yourself so you don't do that sin again so if you can yeah. control if you can control your desire by doing fasting that will help you to control something else that's all but Muhammad one, he is copying everything from somewhere else and you will notice here have nothing to do with any fasting of the Jews or any fasting of Abraham because this is 30 days and if you look around you you will not find anyone doing that except the Sabian yeah no? okay yeah so uh, so we have to make a connection and the connection have to be sponsored by many evidence and all the evidence uh, you know uh, come to to end that Muhammad obviously he was in, in, infected big time by the Sabian you know yeah uh, not someone and the Sabian uh, they are not only in the north of Iraq as today but this is their major let us say headquarter uh, the Sabian the, the headquarter in in Iraq was like uh, Mecca for the Muslim today for the Sabian but the Sabian they spread all over the Middle East uh, to the point the you see the word Mecca the word Mecca is not even Mecca the word Mecca is coming from the temple of the word Makkah which is a Sabian temple of Yemen so the Sabian they extend their religion everywhere all the way to Yemen which means the Queen of Sheba and her people at that time most likely they were people who they uh, or her people at least they were pe people who worship and believe in the same gods of the Sabians and that where the word Makkah is coming from it is coming from Makkah so Makkah was uh, the name of the house of the Kaaba uh, where it's coming from the temple of al Makkah. if you if you know that Muhammad he said there's two stones if you touch them they will forget your sin, forgive your sin uh, or two corners one of those two corners is the uh, is the corner of Yemen why the corner of Yemen is important because they have stones is coming from the temple of Makkah and that stones actually we can search for them and show them for people in the screen and we did many times those stones are taken from the temple of al Makkah in Yemen and that will make supposedly the new house a holy house uh, for uh, for the new believers or let us say you know let us say today people they go to the Kaaba if we can get a few stones from the Kaaba and we build the Kaaba and we put those corn those stones in the corner we say to the Muslims come here in Las Vegas kiss the stone because this is from the Kaaba this is the whole idea so Mecca was a counterfeit of the original temple of Yemen which is al Makkah, and this is why uh, 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 you know uh, it called Ruknul Yemani 
and it have very uh, different look of of uh, of stones from all the stones exist in uh, let me show it in the screen so people they can see I don't know if you can see the screen with us if you look at the screen here this is a Rukn al Yemani uh, uh, which means the Yemeni corner now it's called the Yemeni corner for simply uh, for, you know the Muslim they might give you their own uh, uh, definition however this is the stones coming from the temple of al maqa This is why they look differently from the other stones of the Kaaba. The color look different. You can tell those are not in match with the stones of the rest of the Kaaba. So the same as the Christian today, you know, some Christians, they bring the bones of a, someone, they call him saint, right? And they build in the top of the saint bones or the left of the saint, a church. And that will make the stone, the, sorry, the, the, the church is more blessed. However, this is here, Islam is a pagan practice. They bring a stone, which may then believe it's a holy stone. And to the point, if you touch those stones, your sin is forgiven. This is coming from the Sabian. So you will see here how he used the impact of the Sabian. And what Muhammad took from the Christians and from the Jews was in his way of trying to make them believe in him. But the fact he don't really care for Christianity. That's why at the end he decided to kill them all. When he give up, you know, when he give up, you will notice if you go and read the history of Muhammad, you will see most of Muhammad's life after he became a prophet, announcing himself as a prophet, he was not doing Hajj to Kaaba and he was not praying to the Kaaba. Why? If the Kaaba was a holy place, why since the beginning of his prophethood claim? until many years after he don't pray to the Kaaba direction because at that time he was busy wasting his time trying to convert the Christians and the Jews to be believers in him and to be believers in the Jew to, to be to, to make the Jews and the Christian believe in him he have to pray in the direction of Jerusalem and this is why Muhammad was praying all this time since he left Mecca he gave up in the beginning in Mecca he was doing the same as the Arab as a pagan person so when he was with the Arab of his tribe he was doing what they do to make them convinced that he is a prophet now he he was kicked out from Mecca as the Muslims claim he went I, to I think he actually he was I think where that story originated was he he was kicked out of a monastery no um, no no no, I, no, no. I, something else you see, to share no, with you. Muhammad it's, Muhammad have nothing to do you see you see to, to say he was in a monastery that would make Muhammad educated person because yeah, he was no he's yeah. stupid i mean don't you see what he's doing this guy Zulkarnain, alexander the great he couldn't have got all those ideas if no, he wasn't no, no, educated no, no. you see he no, honestly was no, no, no. well read even it, though he was stupid no my friend a per education those people in monastery they will not accept those stories to be part of anything those are not they, they don't even accept stupid people to be part of their their of their uh, you see in monastery uh, especially in, in the old days uh, they can accept you if you are not smart to be a cook okay <laughs> But if he not, was a cook, but not to be. Um, I would. I just want to share with be, you that. But not to, to be a is, monk. Hold on. There is an Irish surname. Sorry, going to interrupt you a second. There is an Irish surname called Quran in 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 the place that I say that he was born, and the Syriac word which was used in this, the Christian liturgies was Quran, which means scripture lesson, and the word in Irish actually means no, no, no. spear. There's there is no. So the two no, things could have connected for him. No, there, the word Quran is not exist. There's nothing is called Quran. You see, in the Syrian. The word is qarra, ah, qarra, qarra is you speak, and then ra'a, which means he saw. So you say what you saw, which means you read, all right? So Quran is a wrong word, all right? Now, the reason the Quran is written this way, because Muhammad, if you, if you remember, I'm not sure how much you know, uh, uh, Muhammad, he is connected to a guy, his name, Waraq ibn Nawfal. Waraq ibn Nawfal, supposedly, he was a person who was a pagan, then he became a Jew. Then he became Nasara, not a Christian, right? And he used to write a book in Arabic, which is summarizing or translating from the Injil, all right? So this is where Muhammad, he got many of his stories from. But Waraka, he died. And now the book of Waraka is limited, have to do only with the Christians and the Jews. So everything Muhammad, he added to that book, it was of his own stories. This is why I believe the book of Waraka was the one which is makes sense 
is an uh, uh, like uh, not make sense for me as a Christian but let us say it was a kind of uh, someone is educated talking and then the rest is something stupid you see when when somebody bring to me and you speak English <clears throat> you know I mean English is your first language if I if I write an article for you and I say to you and I put it inside the book of uh, Shakespeare and I give you the book and I will make it print exactly as the book of Shakespeare but right away you will notice as an English man or as an Irish man that this is no way that Shakespeare wrote this page correct yeah because my English doesn't fit this is exactly how you see the Quran if you speak Arabic Quran have some verses they have a strong language good language and most of the rest is garbage that's mean that the author of the Quran cannot be one cannot it be what cannot be one person it cannot be one person well, because oh yeah well I I'm sorry can I just interrupt I believe that the we parts in the Quran are actually the monks explanatory notes that they, they copied down what he said translated but they also added the, their points onto what he had said you know when we debate Muslims we have to go by what they believe but however yeah the we yeah. it can be used it can be taken as what they say but this is not a proof of anything the proof of Islam to be false uh, is the language of the Quran itself is not it cannot be written by one person like if you go uh, if you see Muhammad in the Quran as an example say that his God said that if he cause the Quran to be forgotten he will make something better or similar how in the world someone is educated will say such a stupid thing because look how dangerous is that because Allah will make you forget the Quran but yet Allah he will make Quran better than the Quran that's mean Muhammad he noticed in his time that there is a problem he himself cannot even maintain his book he forgot the book he say things they contradict each other and now he want to give us an excuse so he say my God told me any verses we cause to be forgotten or we abrogate so he want to explain why he keep changing his mind about things why because Allah said anything we cause you to be forgotten or to abrogate we are going to make something better or similar now how Allah can make Quran better than the Quran of Allah that is stupid but yep. because Muhammad is collecting stories from different author sometime from Waraka sometime from the neighbor sometime from a woman visiting Aisha you know like the story of the legend of uh, the flying carpet and uh, uh, the hood hood uh, the bird who speak to Suleiman the ant who speak to Suleiman or the, the the punishment of the grave so Muhammad is explaining here why he is not consistent and why he keep bringing things contradict each other I yeah and I think he he what he said live was written down by others and that's why he kept contradicting himself because he he was just saying it off the top of his head no he's a, he's a struggling you know he's a struggling as a person trying to accomplish himself as a prophet so yeah. he did not know what he would do he do it based on that in, in, in the moment so when 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 he saw it is better for him to make the men uh, do uh, muta, you know, have sex for renting women, he said do it. But then later he found that this is embarrassing, and people start talking about it. So he changed it because he didn't have rules, you know. He, there's no rules in Islam. Muhammad is, a, is 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 trying to create a religion. So yeah, uh, every day he have a new. This is why I don't agree with you about he was a heretic of a, of a certain cult because this guy he don't have a religion. He don't have any religion. This guy is everything. This guy is an international United United States United Nation. He have all religion in the world inside him. He have the black yeah, stone. Yeah. The black stone, uh, I find it very uh, much is coming from the Indian. You know the 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 yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the Lalinga. You know the the stone yeah. of Shiva. So he was a sponge. Yeah. If you if you if you look at the at, at the Indian, they are just across the sea from from the Sultanate of Oman few hours in the sea you know and the Arab they are very they have an old route of doing trades even with the China so there is connection between them and other nations and obviously this black stone is coming from somewhere yeah. and you know if you read too you will find that the Arab used to go around the Kaaba totally naked now what kind of religion required that men and women they go naked around the Kaaba unless it's a sexual religion right so there is many religions is involved 
in oh yeah in, 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 oh in, i know in, that yeah. yeah and muhammad is the result of all of them it's like muhammad is like a uh uh, uh, someone here is doing yeah like you know a mixer you know like you, you bought here you know yeah. uh, you bought some Christianity some Jewish some Sabi and some Hindus uh, uh, you know uh, some the stun or star worshippers some of the moon worshipper some of yeah. here some black stone uh, put it together and now we have Islam but Islam is not exist really as a religion it's a collection yeah. of religion this is why it's, Muhammad is teach Sorry, if you if his you teaching on things, marriage and his teaching on slavery is exactly like Breton law, it's like straight out of the book. No, Muhammad, he don't have a teaching about slavery. Muhammad, he is he not? Uh, Muhammad, he have teaching about slavery, he allowed it, didn't he? yeah, he can allow them, but he made it as a uh, you see what Muhammad did. Muhammad, one of his business, he, he used to sell slaves and buy slaves. So, Muhammad, in order to flourish his business as a slave buyer. He come with ideas, you know, like if I say to you, if I am a person who sell chicken, all right? And then I say to you, in order to make God forgive you, you have to free a slave. So what do you do? You have to free a slave, correct? Yeah. But now you need a slave still, and he's, you are allowed to own a slave. So what do you do? You go and buy a new slave. <laughs> all right? Yeah. So Muhammad, he freed a slave and then he captured the slave again and he made him a slave again actually I can show you tons of stories where people they free the slaves Muhammad he make them slaves again even yeah. they are freed by their owners you know so uh, uh, there is no law of slavery in Islam it was a moody depend in the needs of Muhammad there's no law you see people they told me speak about Sharia law there's nothing it's called Sharia law I have a degree you know I have my law degree is an Islamic law and civil law so when you study what it's called Sharia law, you find there is no law in the law. What law? It was a process of collecting everybody law and making it, making a law out of it. You know, it's, uh, 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 um, uh, Islam is like a whore. She slept yeah. with one thousand men, and then nobody knows who is the father. You know, in a better way to describe it, let's say. The, this woman, she got a sperm from every man, and it was what she did put inside her egg. So Islam is a product of a, a whole religion. It's a collection of many, many religion. That's why Islam is not even a religion by itself. Uh, uh, if we ask the Muslims, even who is Allah, they don't even know. Who is Allah? I ask the Muslims now all my life, I keep asking them who is Allah. They don't know. They keep telling me he is the creator. I mean, I'm not asking you if he create or not. Who is Allah? They do not know. What Allah mean? They do not know. Have you ever heard of a pre people? They believe in God. They do not know what his name mean. Simply because the name is not an Arabic name. And they are stealing the name from other religions. This is why they do not know. There's tons of things like what Yasin mean. Uh, what Alif Lam mean. What, uh, 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 what Kahiyas mean. What Quran mean. What do you know? What you are seen? Who is you seen? Who is you seen? You know who? Uh, what you seen mean? They don't know what Israel mean. Who is Israel? If we go yeah. now, can I interrupt Quran. you? Uh, what nationality do you think he was? Do you think he was an Arab? You know, for me, I have to go by what uh, appeared to me the most evident. It says that he is an Arab. It isn't there a chronic verse that says that people questioned how he could produce the Quran because he had a foreign tongue. No, he said. He said when they said to him. They said, uh, well, the, the one you are, because they accuse him that he is learning from two uh, Aramaic uh, guys. So he said to them, those who you speak about, they have a foreign tongue, but my is a pure Arabic. So he's confirming again that he's an Arabic person. And then, okay. uh, you know, uh, uh, he, he confirmed another uh, uh, verse in the Quran that this is a book sent down so you can go and you you know you to to warn the the mother of the villages which is supposed in mecca and what is around it so in the beginning muhammad was trying when he said this chapter this verse in chapter 6 verse number 92 that he is just a local prophet but then with muhammad when his business flourished he became an international he have a stock market now <laughs> all right hey. all right so i'll let you go Thank you, my friend. Thank you for calling anyway. Thank you. And thank you for Cheers, sharing with you. us what you believe. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you very much. Thank You're you. Welcome. Bye. You're welcome. Yeah. Actually, I appreciate those people like uh, our friend here, Mel, uh, because, uh, uh, you know, he is, he is trying to study.
and trying to research and this is the best way to learn I, I actually I advise all of you to do the same you see those who don't read and try to learn I advise him to get my books so can he can get better ideas and then he can continue his studies uh, you can go to amazon.com and you can search for Christian Prince you will see a collection of my books and soon we will have uh, three more books will be published all together uh, but you need to remember Islam is not really a religion Islam is a collection of religion uh, it's like a hover machine you know vacuum machine whatever in the way it take it inside uh, and Muhammad he was not trying really to establish a religion as much he was trying to say I'm a prophet it doesn't matter who is going to believe in him so with the Jews he say I'm a Jew this is why he swear by the Torah but when he could not find himself in the Torah and the Jews did not accept him he swear that he will kill all the Jews he will expel all the Jews and the Christian from the Arabian Peninsula he's so angry from them because he's give up he spent a lot of time trying to convert them in the beginning Muhammad he don't want to kill them because he was hoping that he will have their support and he will be a prophet for them but when they could not believe in him Muhammad this decide especially now he have the, the power to do it he decided to get rid of them and this is the same happened to the uh, to his uh, tribe in the beginning he tried to worship their stones as they do then he gave up the stone he gave up the Kaaba he went to the Jews hey Jews let me swear by the Torah Suddenly he became a believer in the Torah and he followed Moses. But then the Jews did not believe in him. So now he said the best, the worst is uh, the bad for the believers is the one who called themselves Jews. The Christian, they were nicer to him. Why? Because there's no Christian around. He was not really having a, a let us say, uh, a majority uh, interact with the Christians. He have Nasara around him. They are minority. So he did not have a problem with them except they don't believe in him but they were not really as a power to resist him in the Arabian Peninsula this is why he is not too aggressive against the Christians or Nasara which is a fake Christian cult uh, but he was aggressive more against the Jews because the Jews they were established power in the Arabian Peninsula they are big huge tribes and they are powerful they are rich and Muhammad he lived between them you know if you go and live like now if I go and uh, and live between Irish I might have a bad experience about the Irish and then I say oh the Irish are bad people but I didn't speak against someone who's an Englishman why because I did not live between them so but it can be the opposite I might say the Irish are wonderful people because my experience was good with them Muhammad experience with the Jews was bad they rejected him they made fun of him for he was so stupid they tribe him they used to make him say things you know to, to expose him and Muhammad he hated them very much that's why he was so aggressive with them do we have any Muslim would like to call do we have any Muslim would like to call us you see the Muslims they say that uh, Muhammad is a messenger for all mankind when the Quran as we see here chapter 6 verse number 92 said it clearly that Allah he sent him to warn the mother of the village and what is around it <clears throat> they call it here city but the word in Arabic is Qura which is a village and the Quran confirmed that Allah he never sent a messenger unless he speak the language of his people so they might understand never never Allah sent a messenger unless he is speaking the tongue of his own people so he have to be from the people speaking the language of the people in order what in order to understand we send not a messenger except to teach in the language of his own people so you have to have condition here for the messenger according to Islam not according to me the messenger have to be speaking the language of his own people which means he have to be speaking the language and he is from the people and that's mean Muhammad cannot be a prophet for somebody from Germany or from one from China for he don't speak the language and he is not from the people so Muhammad became international Muhammad he mentioned that verse when he was not successful yet to overcome his enemies 
he want to prove to the Arab I am one of you I'm, I'm going to be a prophet for you accept me that's why he insists here to speak that I am speaking your tongue because you see the Christians the Christian monks they speak Aramaic the Bible most of it is is, is, is in Aramaic uh, even the actually even the Torah uh, there's a big part of it was in Aramaic so he doesn't speak Aramaic and he is not an Aramaic and he is not a Hebrew so now who is he he have to find himself a legitimate place this is why Muhammad he claimed to be from Ishmael claiming to be from Ishmael is a step to inherit the throne of Ishmael which is coming supposedly from his father otherwise what he have to do with Ishmael he have nothing to do with him Abraham is an Aramaic man his wife Hajar is an Egyptian how the son became an Arab and you know and many naive Christians in their churches they teach that Muslims are from Ishmael and Muhammad from Ishmael but that's a very stupid statement because even if I marry from an Arab woman my children are not Arab she is Arab already <laughs> Which means you have people already the Arab exists before me you know what I mean guys if I go to Japan right now and I marry Japanese women can I say the Japanese are my children this is stupid but sometime you know I mean even Christians they didn't uh, their 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 the fuse is uh, is uh, you know they are like, like like the Abdul you know everywhere I go the Muslims are Ishmaeli the Muslim where you get this from Musa's in your Bible says he did marry from a woman, a Bedouin woman, who is not a Hebrew. Okay, why you don't say then that the, those the children are the children of Moses are not are not Israeli? Why you don't say that? That's the children they belong to their father, and this is their nationality, and this is the tradition all over in the Middle East. Even the Quran confirm saying. That always people they have to be called by the names of their father, and if they don't know their father, then you call them by brother of religion. All right. Here we go. Udu'uhum li abaihim. We call them by the name of their father. A person have to be called by the name of his father, not by the name of his mother. Jesus was an exception because Jesus, by birth, he is the son of no man. All right, call them by the names of their father. That is the teaching of the Quran. All right, so we have to be smart. You see. The, uh, the, the whole idea is how much you know the much you know the much you can connect the dots together especially if you have a good brain process fast processor you know so I know more than oh I saw here this oh I got this here oh so I can let me connect the dots together and that will make an image for me and this is how the TV work the TV you know provide for you an image which is millions of dots coming together to your machine which is a TV and then that screen in a magical way put the dots together back the person is in the studio you are in your bedroom what happened we got the dots together so in, an, in order to understand this cult you have to collect all the dots the, the dots which it may be sometimes it's small like dust and you put them together and that will make you have a better image all right. Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? <clears throat> who is a Muslim would like to call us and show us that Islam is a true religion? Who is who is going to be our hero today? <coughs> Anyone? Any Muslim he believe in Islam to be a true religion? I believe as an Arab person, Islam is nothing but an Arab cult made by an Arab man. And he was a savage, liar, uh, selfish, and the Quran proving that. Who want to prove me wrong? Anyone? 
any Muslim would like to give us a call give me a call to my skype debate TV you are more than welcome to call me will speak to be nicely by the way I'm against this time as religion but doesn't mean I hate you I don't hate you you don't know me I don't know you nothing personal here all right any Muslim and this is one of the funny things about Muslims you see we stay here for many hours saying any Muslim any Muslim any Muslim if you count how many times I say any Muslim you will not believe it but you don't we don't find the Muslims to call us the second we hang up and I go I come back to Facebook or in my page and you will see the Muslims appear oh you are lying he is lying call me <laughs> why you don't call me and show us the lies like there's a there's a there's a funny guy from Nigeria. This guy he is like between between my feet wherever I walk in in, in Facebook page, to the point I have to ban him. I, I get, call me. I'm here to debate you. Okay, call me. Why you don't call me? I don't debate you on Facebook. I don't debate on Facebook. Facebook is just to post. Go and see in Facebook. I don't post articles. I'm not an article guy. I don't write. The only time I write when I write my books. I don't have time to write I give my time in videos I speak I show in the screen I give teach I give you all the time you want call me I don't try go and find how many articles a Christian Prince you have I have zero I have zero articles I'm not I'm not a person who like to write I write books and it take a lot of time for me for many reasons uh, English is not my first language like today we are working at proofreading tomorrow we are going to work on proofreading it's not fun for me, but I have to. Do we have any Muslim here? <laughs> yeah, you know, if you are a person who try to debate Islam, I encourage you always to read more because the more you read, the more you read, the more you are armed. And the more you read, and try to, to to read something smart because some people they write stupid things you know like don't don't copy an idea of a stupid person just because he wrote it in a book you have to investigate what people they say otherwise there's many many donkeys who they are and claim to be writers like Muhammad Muhammad is a writer too he is the one who come to us with the story of Alexander the Great which is taken from a story written few hundred years before Islam by a Christian a person from Syria but this was a fiction story and this is translated to many languages all over the world it's about a real person you see uh, uh, writing about a real person fiction story is something happened always like now they bring a name of a real person like they say the the, the boot for you George Bush he announced war in Iraq and then the movie start George Bush is a real the war in Iraq is real the rest of the story is fiction all right so Muhammad he you know he like he he collects stories fiction ones because this is why I'm against anyone to say Muhammad was educated Muhammad was a donkey whatever the word donkey mean this guy he is a garbage collector and uh, there is no way any kind of educated person will accept the story of Zulkarnain to be a real story you know Hello. Oh, CP, uh, Sarazi here speaking. Uh, good evening to you. Good evening, my friend. And good evening to all the brethren in the room. Uh, I'm calling just to, for just for one minute. I don't want to take the time of uh, Abdul's if right. they will call. I've told you already several times, even through emails. I don't think Abdul will call you. You are the nightmare of Allah. How come Abdul's can call you? Well, we are hoping that they will call us what we can do. You know, we keep hoping. You are the nightmare of Allah CP. <laughs> well, I don't I don't think so because Allah is fake anyway. I mean, uh, what night you are a nightmare of Allah, but there's no Allah. <laughs> That's good. Anyway, anything else, my friend, you want to say? Okay. Thank you. Pardon? Uh, there, there's anything you want to add? No, nothing, nothing, CP. That's I, I called it. It was a quick call to say to remind you that you are the nightmare of Allah. So there's no point uh, 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 asking because you asked the same question 1,000 times and we never got an answer. 
the answer is that you are the nightmare of Allah. I don't think. Uh, All right, thank you very uh, much. Uh, uh, Abdus, we call you. Good night. All right, thank you, my friend. Take care. Got the bus. All right. You see, when I was in school, I was number one student in my classroom. But the surprise is, I was the only student. This is exactly when Allah He says in the Quran. That's why I say Muhammad cannot be a smart person. Muhammad is a smart, maybe between those naive, stupid Bedouin Arab. You know, like when he say that Allah is the best of the creators, it is was a verse he copied from his scribe, his scribe who was writing for him, and the story is even written in Muslim books. But is that a story? Is that a statement of a smart man? A smart man would not say that. How you say Allah is the best of the creators if He is the only creator? You know, the same as I'm saying, I was the best student when I am the only student in the classroom. That's stupid. You are not the best student. To say you are the best student, you have to be the best of many students who they are exist. But if you are the only creator, how you are the best of the creators? That's mean Allah is saying a stupid statement if he is exist. And he is comparing himself by somebody which is a fiction, is not exist. How you can compare yourself by someone is not exist. So blessed be Allah, the best of the creators. Allah is saying, Blessed be Allah to the best of the creators. I mean, this is isn't this a stupid statement? This is going to be accepted if somebody writing the word here let us let us divide this to two parts two parts the first one so blessed be allah this is going to be allah saying that because that will make it funny so then that's mean there is somebody saying that the author of the quran then the best of the creators okay then we ask the muslims how many creators there is they will say to you only allah so how Allah is the best of the creators? Oh, the Allah here is uh, saying he is the best of the creator. I know, I know he's saying that. So how he is the best of the creators if there's no creators? That is a false statement. That's me, Allah is lying. He's saying to us, I am the best of the creators, but yet there's no creators. The best donkey, but there's only one donkey. I mean, this is stupid. This is donkey statement. Even donkeys would not say that. I get you the best zucchini. How many zucchini you have? I have the only one. So you did not get me the best zucchini. This is the only one you have anyway. So is that a language stupidity? Is that a meaning stupidity? It's a stupidity, whatever you take it. It's a language, it's a meaning, it's a structure. It, it, this is God. This is God is talking. And all of us we knew that this is a story that this verse all of it it's coming from a guy who worked for Muhammad as a scribe his name is Abdullah ibn Sarah and he was in and he left Islam and then after that he converted to Islam again to save his life Abdullah ibn Sarah was writing the Quran for Muhammad as the Muslim story report when Muhammad finished and he recite all the way to this side here this guy, he said, he liked it, so he said, Oh, please be Allah, the best of the creators. Muhammad, he heard it. He said, put it there. He said, put what? He said, put what you just said. I, said I, I, the, I said, he said, yeah, put it there. He said, he said Allah, he told me to, to, to put it there. <laughs> so the guy said to himself, uh oh, this guy is a false prophet. I am the one who made it. And now he's asking you to put it in the Quran. So he ran away and he got he, he became an apostate. I am the one who just said this verse and now he's asking me to write it down in the Quran, claiming that Allah told him that to put it there. Well, if Muhammad is a prophet, but by the way, I'm just quoting for you what it says there in the Muslim stories, in the Muslim books. He said to himself, Well, if Muhammad was inspired by his God, Allah, well, I am inspired by Allah too, and I'm a prophet. <laughs> That's Islam. And obviously, Christian Prince is inspired too. Let me make a Quran for you. I ate a chicken. It was the best of the chicken. But I am a vegetarian. And I don't like a chicken. 
This is the whole Quran. There's not, no meaning. I mean, read the Quran. You will find there is no connection between a verse before and a verse after. And the same verses can be repeated all over the Quran because the one is talking is empty. There's nothing to say. Let me show you an example. This is God. I mean, are you sure this is God? I am going to search for this sentence. One sentence. As one sentence appear thirty one time. Do you see it? Look. Look. Do you see it? What's wrong with this guy? Repeating the same sentence over and over and over and over. What's wrong? What is that? Isn't it enough to say it once? Page number two. Let us switch. <laughs> over and over and over. <laughs> this is God talking? Huh? This is the the strong Arabic Quran. You see, in the in the for the Arab, if you make a point, if you make a point and you repeat the sentence twice, you, this is a failure. That means you are not really a good poetry man. What kind of God is God? He's out of words. He have nothing to say. Why you can repeat the same thing? Look, the same sentence, we are just keep going. Because he's empty, there's nothing to say. He's just trying to fill up a space. And if you read the whole chapter here, what you will learn? Nothing. If we take this chapter of the Quran, of you, or we add it, nothing we learn. What we learn? Nothing. Look at this. Allah the most gracious. I mean, thank you very much. You said that to us from the first verse in the Quran, and now it is He who taught the Quran. Are you sure? I thought it's Jibreel. It is He who created the man. It's He who are you to Allah? I mean, how you, have you ever heard of a God? He kept saying it is He, it is He. So who are you? The one is talking. He had him, he, he had taught him speech and intelligence. This is intelligence to say the women have a sperm coming from her backbone. The sun and the moon for, follow courses exactly. Do you know what, guys, do you know the sun and the moon, the courses of the sun and the moon? Do you want me to show you? Let me show you. Let's show you the intelligence. He, the, the funny, the Muslim here, they want the word intelligence. I mean, I'm dying from the intelligence here. Read with me the intelligence of the Quran. This is the intelligence of, of the Quran. Muhammad explained. The Prophet asked me, the Prophet asked me, do you know where the sun goes at the, uh, at the time of the sunset? Remember the verse there speaking about the sun and the moon course. Okay, what is the course? So do you know where the sun goes at the sunset? The guy, he said, Allah and his prophet know better because Muhammad, he claimed that the knowledge he have is coming from his God, Allah. This is not his knowledge. This is God. He said, I replied, Allah and his apostle know better. He said, it goes, i.e., it travel, till it prostrate itself under the throne of Allah, and it take a permission to raise again. <laughs> I mean, this is science. You see the intelligence? And not only that, 
Muhammad, he don't stop. I mean, Muhammad, he, he, he loved to talk. And the more he talked, the more he do poo poo. Look what he said. He said here that this is the meaning of the verse of a chapter 38, 36, verse number 38. This guy is confirming that this is Quran. Confirming what he said in this story here, this fiction, stupid story, that this is science of Allah. Explain the Quran. So he said, oh, this is, and this is what Allah, he meant by chapter 36, verse number 30. For sure, he did not mention the chapter number because I believe in the time of Muhammad, there was no numbers. Those are something they are added later. So, and this is what Allah, he mean by saying, and the sun runs to its fixed course. I mean, this is science. Who can beat that? Nobody. Any Muslim can beat that? Huh? Uh, look like today is the same as yesterday, the same as the day before. The Muslims are not going to call. What I can say? Allah himself, he cannot answer. Muslims cannot answer. They make videos about the amazing Quran, the science of the Quran. But all what we see is the stupidity of the Quran. This is this is science. Sun set in murky water. Sun rays from between the horn of the shaitan. Have you really believed that shaitan, he have two horn and the sun rays from between them? That's why Muhammad he forbid the Muslims to pray if the sun rise already. Why? Because the sun rise from between the horn of shaitan. I mean, that's that is science. Let us see. <clears throat> Here we go. Read the science, read with me. The prophet stood beside the pulpit and pointed his finger toward the east and said, Affection are there. Affection are they won't like we 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 affection are there. Are there from where the side of the head of Satan come out? Mark what the the side of the sun, you see it? I mean that's science. That is science. I mean, who can who can beat that? Hmm. Let us see. Let me show you more hadith. <clears throat> it would be. This side where the wood appear, the height of unbelief, this where appear the horn of shaitan, i.e. the east, the fact he was pointing his hand at the house of Aisha. Anyway, let it go. Let us show you. Look, look. Do you notice the hadith I'm looking for is not translated? I mean, anybody can tell me why? Any Muslim can tell me why? What is the translation? Where is the translation? <laughs> space, empty space. I found the hadith, but they don't want to translate the hadith. Can you tell me why? I will tell you why, because it's very embarrassing. It's very stupid. So what they do? They cannot say this is weak. This is strong hadith. This is sahih. So if we translate, people will laugh. Don't start your prayer when the sun is rising. Okay, why? Because it rises from between the two horn of shaitan. So we found the hadith, but we don't found the translation. Here we go. Thank you very much. I just did. Science. I mean, this is science. What do you want more? 
We just found where the sun rise from the sun rise from between the two horn of shaitan I'm so glad that is not coming from between his ass At least from between this uh, I mean from the horn of shaitan At least this is like I mean something to consider shaitan he have two horn and there is sun coming from between them and now we did not pray I mean why we can't pray if shaitan Sorry, if if the if the sun is coming from between the two horn of shaitan, I'm hungry. I need to eat. My belly is talking to me. Any Abdul? Why? Why we can't pray? Science. This is pure science. I mean, who can who can reject this? Are you kidding me? Right? Yeah, I need to eat. I eat once a day. What I can do? Hadith number, no problem. Hadith number, here we go, in front of your eyes. Sunan and Nisai, Sunan and Nisai, book number six, Hadith number 578. This is the name of the book in the top here. Let us highlight for you. And this is the hadith number. Any Abdul? And I think I think what happened here for this uh, for this hadith, I think the goat, the same goat who ate the Quran, ate this hadith. But in English this time, that is very no normal practice to happen in Islam. I saw a video of a Muslim. He was warning Muslims not to accept the translation of those hadith. He's saying, "Brother, brother, go." I I, I posted the hadith once, uh, but I can't find it. Brother, brother, don't believe they are lying. He speak Arabic. They are lying. Look at the translation here. Look at the translate the Arabic there. They are liars. But this guy, he do not know. They are lying for the purpose of protecting Islam. They are lying for a purpose. We know they are lying. The whole idea is how we can protect this cult. You want them to translate this? Are you sure? But let me let me see. Let me see if we can find the same hadith uh, in different place. Hold on. Because sometimes they make a mistake, you know, they translate it there, but they forgot to delete it in a different place. Hold on. Uh, hold on, we found we, we found a part of it. Hold on, here we go, here we go. <laughs> See, we find it in a different place, but here they made a mistake. It's not the whole story here, it's a different story, but it's say the same. Read with me. Hmm? Then pray as much as you want until you pray Asr. Asr is afternoon. And then refrain from praying until the sun has set. For it set between the two horn of shaitan. And it rises between the two horn of shaitan. I mean science. This is science. Any Muslim can tell us really why we should not pray when the sun set and why we cannot pray when the sun is ri rising? Is it really? That's what's happening. The shaitan is where the horn of shaitan, where the sun coming from. Do you see it? Any Abdul have a comment? Let us show you the reference for those who like to keep reference. Sunan Ibn Majah. Oh, this is Da'if. Hold on. It's Da'if. But the other one is not Da'if. <laughs> By the way, this is not a Da'if. And even if they say da'if, it's accepted. But let me show you the same hadith in different place. Hold on. The funny, the Muslims are already funny. Okay, read with me this one. Is this one da'if? No. Here we go. It's the same. So how that one is da'if, this one is not da'if. <laughs> this is Sahih Bukhari. Hadith number 3272. 3273. They are merging two hadith together. All right? Okay. And you should not seek to pray at the sunrise or sunset for the sunrise from between the two horn of the devil. You see it?
that is Islam, my friend. Uh, for those who are watching us for the first time, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you like what we do. Uh, I do almost every day live broadcast after 4.30 p.m. here. And be sure that your um, uh, YouTube notification is on so you can be informed when you are on. And if you are already subscribed, don't forget to unsubscribe so Allah can bless you twice and then subscribe again. This is the logic of Islam. The logic of Islam is the bad deed can be deleted by the good deeds. So what do you do? It is bad deed to subscribe to Christian Prince. It is good deed to unsubscribe. So let me give you an advice, Muslims. Subscribe and subscribe, subscribe and subscribe, subscribe and subscribe. <laughs> what a stupid religion. Uh, what you can do when the monkey became a prophet and the chimpanzee is God? Do you feel you are in the zoo? At least the zoo have a green trees and something here we don't even have the trees you have nothing but the garbage shouting people saying we want to kill you uh no i'm not going to be later actually today i'm really tired because i was speaking for many hours you can tell from my voice tomorrow i have a proofreading too um uh, tomorrow i will try to do a live broadcast uh, but if i could not make it because i'm losing my voice because i have tomorrow from the morning until we finish because I have to finish the book tomorrow the the person who is helping me with the proofreading is going vacation all right so we, we need to finish tomorrow um, and so we can publish the book because everything is ready except I don't want to publish one book alone I want to publish the two volume together um, and we have about 38 pages or 40 pages left uh, to do proofreading so I want to say thank you guys for being here. May the Lord bless you. And I wish you the best time for the weekend. Today is Saturday. And Saturday is a good day. And every day is a good day for God. But Saturday is a special. So I advise you, you know, uh, uh, if you don't mind, to read something. Something will make your, your, your heart fresh. And something will make your heart not uh, hard like a rock. And that is always the word of the Messiah, our Lord, our Savior. Nothing is better to soften your heart. You will see that you are acting differently with your family. Take my advice. Try it. You will see that you speak to your children differently, to your husband, to your wife. You speak to your parents differently. The word of the Lord is the best medicine for a good family, for a healthy person. Read it. You don't need to read 10 hours, you know. You can read as much as you wish. But every day is, is is a is a good medicine for your life if you cannot every day at least once a week so i advise everybody to get softener you know we put softener for the water we put softener for the skin we put softener but there's a real softening will soften our heart will make us a loving people will make us a kind people will make us different kind of a quality quality which everybody around you will like it and will love it because the second you are close to the Messiah, you will find that everybody around you like you and everybody around you see you as a different person because you speak differently, you act differently, you will become loving, giving, and you will become a new person. This is why me as a Christian, I believe that the Messiah, he made me as a newborn again because I am born with him. This is why my name is a Christian prince. I'm not using my Arabian name for I have no name except his name and no name is better than his name. By his name, we are victorious by his name we are different and by his name we are born again that is my lord so who's yours christ is lord islam is false and until we see you tomorrow i wish you a blessed weekend and a blessed night thank you very much